Hi everybody, Waxfraud here, and welcome to the 7,000 day celebration video. I can't believe we're on 7,000 days. Getting away from the hot air balloon, we're gonna jump on the plane, meet our chicken pilots, but this video is going to actually go from day 6,000 all the way to day 7,000. This will be a little recap video here. I'm gonna actually hop down and grab some wither skulls, because today, to celebrate, I wanna beat a wither. Go inside here, we'll take this guy down, we'll take this guy down right here. I'm gonna go down close to bedrock. I really wanna get an emerald beacon today, so that's the goal. There will be no slimes here, I'm sorry sir, you have to be gone. We'll run down our hallway where we have a bunch of chickens stored. I'm sorry about this guys, you can't, yeah, you can kind of see them when I jump here. But we're gonna go one, two, and three. This guy has no idea what's coming to him right now. He's about to explode and I'm about to shoot some arrows his way. Oh god, the battle has begun! Honestly, I think, man, these wither matches just get easier every time. No more arrows, let's start using the sword, and three, two, three, two, three, two, I mean three, two, one. I totally had that countdown right. Got our nether star here, we can torch it up, let's get our wither roses. Sorry to the chickens, but also thank you chickens. Let's head back up to the surface. I think we'll just put it right here in front of the starter house. You'd think placing down these big blocks of emeralds would sound a little bit different, it kind of sounds just like placing stone. Big and shiny, let's get the beacon going with the red stained glass right here. That red beam is looking magnificent, let's get a diamond up in here, and you know what, let's get our speed increased around here, I think that would be kind of nice. Now we are extra speedy at the starter house, this is awesome. Well guys, thanks again for watching the 7,000 days video, I really do appreciate the support. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to episode 43 of the Hardcore Let's Play series. We're gonna head towards the cat sanctuary that we had built in the last episode, right over here past the weaponsmith trading hall. And this camel is still chilling right here on the scaffolding. What are you doing, dude? Are you just gonna be up there your whole life? I'm, I'm not taking him down, so if that's what he wants to do, then that's where he's gonna be. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the cat sanctuary on the last episode. We'll walk in through the side of the house, and uh, we're actually gonna give one of these cats a name. My favorite name that I had seen in the comment section was Kathy, and so we're gonna go right here. What's up, Kathy? How you doing? Keep the cat names coming, guys. We're going to keep naming these cats. And uh, actually, we got a couple more things to name. There's a bunch of pandas that are stuck in a hole on the other side of the town. Let's go save those guys real fast. On stream, we'd been using this giant field for a tree farm. And I noticed that all of the pandas from episode 2 that had wandered over here ended up in a big hole. Looks like there's still some acacia trees that are growing. Same with some birch trees. But over here is where the pandas are. Actually, it looks like one escaped. Good on you, bud. Good on you. But for these guys, oh, and some cows and some pigs, it looks like these guys need some help. I wanted to name one of these pandas, and you know what, Perry the Panda, that's what you're going to be. Let's build these guys way out, let's get a bunch of dirt over here, and give the pandas a kind of new little staircase out of here. We gotta maybe break some of this down, they are definitely, oh, there we go, okay, climb up the stairs, let's go. Pandas are not the brightest, we're going to have to actually just excavate a little bit. There we go, alright, good on you, pandas. This one's got a lot of snot. I'm gonna get some slime from you, bud. Perry, come on, I need you to lead the way, bud. Almost got the hole filled up all the way here. All right, we got the hole filled up. The pandas are running around, and they are looking more free than ever. Perry, I'm gonna have to have you lead the way. It seems like these guys, uh, they might need the forest over there, or I can make a new forest over here. The past few episodes have really been kind of depleting all of the wood sources that I have, so I have been just pretty much getting all of the wood that I can. We've mostly been gathering all of these resources live on stream, and that's been on Twitch at twitch.tv slash waxfraud. Feel free to join anytime if you'd like to. Actually, I have a couple more names that I'd like to throw out that were pretty good ones from the comment section, so we have to head to the goat sanctuary real fast. Right past the armor trading hall, let's go. Oh, look at this. We got some savannah biome guys over here. Looks like they've been occupying this space just fine. Running in here real fast, we have Gary the goat, and then right over here we have Gilgamesh the goat. What's going on, guy? These goats seem to be thriving in here, and you know what? I love it. Then next I thought, you know what, let's head right over to the Sniffer Farm. This sanctuary is home to many sniffers without a name, and you know what? I thought this name right here, Slushy, is going to be perfect. Thank you, Slushy. You have been doing well. Let's actually take a look and see how this farm has been doing. I've been flying over this a bunch, but I haven't been here in a while. Oh my god. Okay, let's uh, let's take some of this. Plant some of these over here. Dude, I did not realize how many... Uh, oh, we need to take some of that out of there because it's probably all backed up. On stream, we've also been working on zombifying all of the villagers and then curing them so that we can get one-for-one -one trades. So look at this, one emerald for one campfire. That is what I'm talking about. It doesn't get better than the one-for-one -one trade. I think we could keep on zombifying them and curing them so we could even get the one-for-one -one coal. 
Also, with all of the farmers, you can actually get the one for three on the golden carrots. If we head down to the basement over here, we can listen to the many hairs, but uh, we can get some nice trades. One for one on the melons and the pumpkins too is pretty nice. Let's head over to the goal board real fast and let's take a look and see what we can do next with this episode. There's been a lot of things that we've been working on, but the goal board I can't really remember and the top thing says donkeys. You know what we could do? We could go find some donkeys. I don't think I've ever made a donkey sanctuary, so you know what? There's a first time for everything. Definitely need to grab some leads. Probably gonna have to grab some boats. I think we can actually breed and end up making some mules as well. Let's pop right over this island over here, and I believe there's gonna be some donkeys right up in the mountains. Oh, there's a horse up here getting hurt. Hold on. Horse! Horse! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Oh, now I'm getting stuck. Now I'm getting hurt. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We gotta get this horse out. Horse, you gotta get out, bud. Okay, he's getting out. He's getting out. No! Horse, get out! Okay, he's in. Whoo! Buddy, what are you doing? You can't be out here just doing that. Okay, uh, let's open a path here, and you are now free. Get out of there, dude. Grab some snow while we're here. This powdered snow up here is just dangerous, man. Don't think I don't see you up here, bud. What do you think you're doing up there? You're done. You're gonna be done right now. Well, I keep finding horses. I haven't found the donkeys yet. They just must have wandered off, but uh, we will find them. The rain has made it a little hard to find the donkeys, but I think I just found an entire family over here. We got one, two, and a baby. Is this a baby donkey? We have a baby donkey already right here. Hold up, guys. You gotta come with me. All right, we got that was just, okay. That was kind of nice. Just an entire family. Let's go. Don't worry, guys. I'm gonna take you on a journey to a way better home. Donkeys seem to be able to traverse the land pretty well. It looks like, uh, oh god, my bad, guys. Yeah, it seems like you can sprint and you can count on them to always be right there. Gotta sprint through the sunflower patch real fast. Jump into one more lake over here. What's up, guys? Still going strong. Let's go. Gonna have to hop through this stone valley, but the, you know what? It seems like these donkeys can do anything they want. Back away, buddy. Back away. It's just me and the donkeys passing through. We come in peace. We are so close to home, I can smell the wheat field. I'm also loving having this new ocean watchtower in front of the mob farm. It just, uh, I don't know, just having the tower next to it, it just makes the ocean feel more full. And what do we have over here, my guys? You can't just be out here in the ocean like this. It's dangerous. It's a dangerous place for chickens. I think settling in next to that field where we had cleared out all the trees is going to be a good place for the donkey sanctuary. Come on now, donkeys. Get in the bridge, please. Oh, come on. Don't break the lead now. Get in here. What are you doing? Baby donkey, get out of the water. Yep, come on now, guys. Don't do this to me. We'll walk past the 1.20 gold board without looking at it because we're going to ignore it for now because we're not going to think about the things we're not doing. Well, donkeys, what do you think? We have a giant terraced land up here. It's kind of not really at sea level like most of the buildings, so you're going to be the first of its kind. A lot of buildings are going to come up over here, but uh, for now, I'm just going to keep on using this as a giant tree farm. Let's tie you guys up right there, and you know what? Let's uh, let's get to building. Couple stone bricks later, couple spruce logs later, and voila, we got the beginning of a building. You guys just wait. This is going to be everything you ever hoped for. I was also just thinking it's going to be nice having a bunch of buildings along this sea coastline here because we have the ocean over there, ocean over here, but uh, with this big lake, we don't really have any buildings off to the left, but we are going to start having buildings off to the right. Got a little archway going here on the bottom floor, and look at what we got here. What's going on, Buster? What do you got for me? Okay, you know what? I'll take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that, take a little bit of this, and uh, you know what? I really do appreciate you bringing me the leads. Thank you very much. Do not spit on... Oh, you know what? I said don't do that, sir. Don't do it. You guys saw nothing. You saw absolutely nothing. But yeah, for the most part, the first floor, the structure is done. I think what we're going to do is add some wall to fence to chain to lanterns outside. We go bing, bang, boom, and bop. Yeah, I'm thinking the foundation here on the next floor, we should actually go with the birch planks on the inside. Go up about five here so that we can make our same window pattern. There's a couple more bangs, a couple more booms, and uh, also a couple more bops. Thanks again for watching these builds on stream, though. I do want to thank you guys for stopping by on the Twitch streams again. But uh, also, I did want to remind you, we are going to start doing a couple more YouTube streams every week pretty soon. So definitely be on the lookout for those. Those are coming up. 
Recently, we've had a lot of people asking why I put so many buttons, so many trap doors, and just so many items on the roofs in general, and it's usually because, and it goes back to episode one, I do not want anything spawning in this world on the roofs. This is a hardcore world, and if I don't light it up, stuff will spawn here. A creeper's just gonna spawn up here and drop down on me one day, unannounced, and I do not want that to happen. As you can see here, though, we did have the roof kind of set up with the granite and the brick on the side, and I actually like that. It's a nice little contrast from the bricks and the wood over here. Birch wood looking good, except I think we need to maybe add some birch trap doors. We'll add one up top and one below, and actually, I like that a lot. Let's get these on all the windows here. Only one right here, and actually, nah, you don't get any. We always use in the ferns, and we're always using the azaleas, and we happen to have some torch flowers on us, so what I'm gonna do is actually go around the sides and get these torch flowers up in here. Also, if we walk, yep, right here, right above the entrance, we're gonna have some torch flowers too. We're kind of getting everything set up. I'm loving the way this building is looking. It's like looking a little smushed, but uh, I like it. Usually our roofs are going up with planks and stairs, and this time we used a lot of slabbage. In between all these mini chimneys with all of the campfires, we have kind of an empty space, so I think maybe trying out the lecterns here would look kind of cool. Don't necessarily ever use lecterns as a wall, but uh, I mean, we've used anvils before, but lecterns not so much. Let's give it a try. Usually we're using hanging signs here, but uh, let's actually take a step back and see what it looks like real quick. Head by the donkeys, and you know what? That's actually pretty nice. Honestly, lecterns are pretty useful building blocks. Horse over here came to join the party. What's going on, bud? How you doing? This guy have a name? Did he escape at all? No, this is a nameless horse. This guy over here, we have pandas over here and horses that are just kind of encroaching upon the new build. Off to the side, you can see we actually did create a little awning over here. I think I'm going to actually bust down the middle of the wall here to let the donkeys kind of have an outdoor area too. And finish the andesite poles over here. I wanted to use andesite just because it was a little different than all the stone blocks that we were using. We'll slap them up on this side as well. I think what we're gonna do is actually get some azaleas in the potted- Oh, whoa, 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 there we go. Yeah, let's get some azaleas over here into the potted plants and kind of make this look a little nicer. Besides the interior of this build, I kind of just wanted to make a tough chimney, so we'll fly up here. It doesn't have to be anything special, but if we actually just get to this back side, maybe just take out one of the campfires, a little bit of the birch. And start a tough chimney right here, just a two by one. And not so bad, let's- yeah, alright, cool. Now, what could the donkeys possibly be cooking that uh, that makes it have smoke in the sanctuary? I, I'm not really sure, but uh, we'll figure it out. Started planting some jungle trees over here to bring the jungle back over to the pandas, because we released these guys, and they are they're kind of just chilling over here. Let's just, uh, let's start taking this area out right here and figure out what we're gonna do with the interior. I'm still unsure. Maybe a little bit more of a natural landscape. And you know what? Before I forget, I wanted to fly up here. Let's actually just get a light right here and let's get a light right here. Okay, yeah, that's looking way better. I thought it was looking a little bit dark up there and now we can get back in here. Got the interior here pretty much done. We got it all lit up. We have the jack lanterns here, some end rods and some frog lights to kind of cover up some of the darker areas. Pat in the middle that's going to separate both sides and you know what i think the donkeys have plenty of space the only thing is actually on the ceiling yeah there we go let's cover up the glowstone with some trap doors here we would put some corn flowers up in here some alliums also and uh, the oxidaisies and also the azure bluettes because you would usually find some of these flowers up in the meadow i think the only thing we're missing now is actually just some ferns going in between all of these pitcher plants here now we need to just go let these guys loose and bring them into their new homes Come on now, guys. Follow me in here. Let's go. We should be able to make a mule, too. So I'm going to get this horse. To Dang, he's pretty fast, actually. I'm going to get this horse to follow me up into the donkey sanctuary. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get a mule going. Get in here, dude. Come on. Hey, up, let's go. Okay, I think it's all pretty much enclosed here. So let's, uh, let's feed you. Let's feed you. Golden carrots weren't working for some reason. Let's try to use the golden apples on these guys. Let's go bam and bam. what what's going on? How come I can give it to the horse, but I can't give it to the donkeys? Completely forgot that I need to tame these donkeys first. This is oh, there we go, buddy. The first donkey we ever tamed. You know what we're gonna call you? We're gonna name you Dennis. Thank you, Dennis the donkey, for being here for me. All right, sir, you can be just like Dennis. So let me tame you. Hey, come on now, guy. Let's go. Hey, what are you doing, buddy? Let's go. All right, now let's. Oh, dang! They are, they are, these guys are ready to go. Let's uh, let's give you one. Let's make a baby donkey right here, and then you know what? Uh, wait, hold on. Where's the baby donkey? Where baby donkey? Let's go. Baby donkeys, man, they are underrated. 
And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, Dennis. Uh, let's go here and let's make a mule. There's our first mule. Let's go, buddy. Yo, looking nice. You know what this means? We're gonna have to make a mule sanctuary pretty soon. Also, we do need to name this mule, so uh, you guys know what to do in the comment section. Give me some suggestions, please. Look at this beautiful little donkey family. We got Dennis and all the other donkeys to be named pretty soon. This is great. Feels nice to get a cozy sanctuary going for the donkeys here and mules. We'll not forget the mules. And I feel like we made it as cozy as we possibly could. But uh, let's go ahead and step out to the front. We made a nice little garden out of the front yard. Made it look nice and cozy out here too. I hope it looks decent to you guys. But man, I really just want to thank y'all for watching. Thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member, Patreon supporter, or Twitch subscriber. Any of those, man. Just thank you for the support. Want to ask you guys to do something nice for somebody and take care of yourselves. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to episode 44 of the Hardcore Minecraft Let's Play series. We are at the Donkey Sanctuary that we built in the last episode episode right now. We have some saddles for the donkeys, and we actually have some diamond horse armor to put on the horse. Thank you, sir, for helping make the mule. You're looking good. Saddle for you, and actually, let's go over here. We can get a, uh, there we go, a saddle for you. Looking good, Dennis, looking good. There were plenty of name suggestions in the comments section of the last episode, and I loved most of them, but my favorite was actually Mac the Mule, so here we go. Let's go, dude, Mac the Mule. Almost forgot to name one of the donkeys. Let's fly back in here. My favorite comment, oh, dang, all right, hold on. My favorite comment left from the last episode was actually Dexter, so we got Dexter the donkey right here. Thank you guys for all the name suggestions. It's making this world so much more lively. Also, this bedazzled horse right here is going to be named Ham. What's going on, Ham? Ham, you're going to be the guy that's in charge of making more mules. We will make a mule sanctuary eventually. We'll get on that, but uh, for now, we got some other things we got to do. What's going on, Daniel? How you doing? Stay chilling. And uh, your friend out here, stay vibing. What's going on, buddy? Hope you're doing well. All these turtles, man, they just keep getting caught. Keep in the rafts here. I feel like we got to collect one more turtle. On stream, I realized I might be playing a little bit. Whoa, dude, buddy, are you trying to... Actually, you can't get out. Are you trying to sell some stuff? Actually, you know what? You're, you're stuck in here forever, I think. Good luck getting out of here, bud. But yeah, I think I was playing just a little bit too fast at one point. I completely forgot that I left an opening to a cave right here open, and uh, yeah, now it's closed at least. And while we're over here, I do want to say hi to John. I also left a bunch of these green frog lights open for business. We gotta cover them up with all these azalea bushes. Move, panda, get out the way. John, what's going on? How you doing, buddy old pal? Actually, I think I just heard a cat. Is there a cat in here somewhere? Ooh, the parrot is here too. We gotta get a parrot sanctuary. Oh, we have more parrots. I keep forgetting that we have parrots. We got a wild villager up in here as well. Villager might have actually let the cat out when he left the door open. Oh, I see a cat. Okay, never mind. I see a cat that's trying to hide behind a bush. Come here, buddy. I have some salmon. I know you're gonna want some salmon. Eat the salmon. I have you cornered. You're my friend now. Let's go. Yo, I just took a nap and this cat just gave me a rabbit's foot. Let's go, dude. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Now, cat, let's go up here. We're gonna get into the cat sanctuary. You're gonna hang out with all the other cats. This cat needs help getting through the gate. Ah, oh, there he is. Let's go. Okay, let's close it up. Sit down, Buster. There you go. It's crazy that the ocelot is still back here just chilling. And before I get out of here, I actually wanted to name one of the cats Pepper after my real-life cat named Pepper. Actually, while we're on this side of town, I wanted to fly over here and show you guys the underground library. I forgot to show this in the last episode. It is a long play that we worked on. I wanted to get the new chiseled bookshelves in a new library, and I chose it to be underground. Walk down the spruce staircase here, and voila, we have ourselves the underground library. I haven't filled up all of the bookshelves yet with books because I actually am kind of low on leather, which, you know what, we'll actually take care of later. Got a lot of cows in the barn right now, and uh, it's looking like they could be making a lot of leather. But we can hop down here to the second level. I actually enjoyed this one a little bit more because there's little mini hallways in the back that we filled up with some books. This is just a potential hallway right here for another cave or another strip mine. But I do enjoy this little area. We made a giant desk back here for you to pick up a book and read at. Just very nice and cozy in here, and I really do enjoy this one. Thank you guys for watching. If you did, there's actually one thing we got to do, and there is a giant beacon that's actually kind of taken up a little bit of space back here. So I think this thing right here might have to go, or we can... Like, put it, move it over, like, two blocks, but it's kind of just in the way. Let's actually, let's just remove it. See you later, Beacon. Gotta take out all the iron, too. Let's, uh, let's just move this to a more convenient location. Hey, you over there, stop hopping. I said stop hopping right now. Stop doing that. Stop doing what you're doing right now. Sir, I'm gonna be honest, I really do not like what you're doing over here. Why? Why are you just hopping? I don't know why, but this right here just still cracks me up. All the villagers, they're just getting caught up in the wells, and it's, it's just funny to me. Another long play that came out before this episode was actually the overgrown ocean nether portal right here. I used a lot of azalea and a lot of moss. 
This thing was extremely fun to build, and I actually do plan on doing a lot more stuff just like this. We can hop through. I want to build a path that actually goes out to the beyond over here where we have not explored. Well, I mean, we've explored it, but I mean, regarding the builds over here, this ocean is pretty much empty. But yeah, it's exciting to get some more stuff over on this side of the island. While we were building this, though, we did run right out of lily pads because I was trying to make some more pathway with the lily pad right here. We ended up having to use a little bit more mossy cobblestone and mossy blocks. So I think we probably need to go fly to a swamp somewhere and just get some more of these guys because I don't... I wish there was a way to farm them, but you just can't. Also, while building this or one of the other long plays, I don't remember which, but I have lost my bed, and now I'm gonna have to go to the town here and sleep on a rando bed. Thank you, random- Oh my god, we have a, ca a camel on the loose! Buddy, why are you doing this to me? Let's pick you up here, I'm gonna get you on the lead, let's break this. I'm taking you back to the camel sanctuary, come on, bud. I wonder how many camels are just walking around the town aimlessly. I also discovered that the villagers that get stuck down and under the sugarcane farm, they never make it out. Uh, no matter what I do, I can do this, they can hop up everywhere. Sometimes they run out, most of the time they do not, so I'm just doing that. Sorry, dude. Tried to take a shortcut through the flower field, but all of the end rods, the camel just kept getting stuck on them, so now we have to go around. Come on, buddy, why you gotta be so big? Camels and sniffers, dude, the two largest mobs, I feel like, in the end of the wardens, they just keep adding giant mobs in the game. Captured camel, say hello to the camel that won't get down from the scaffolding. Camel that won't get down from the scaffolding, say hello to captured camel. Look at all this cowage, man. It really just never ends. Taking you back inside, Buster. I don't know how you got out, but you're getting in here. And I don't know how I forgot that camels can just go over one fence line there. So let's just double them up. What's going on, camels? How you doing? Welcome in to your home. Guarantee you we're still gonna find some more camels out there. I think there was like at least two or three more in here that are gone, so uh, we'll find them. I need some rockets if we're gonna be going to get lily pads, and also don't mind all of the brewing stands on the floor. Actually, you know what? That's actually what we're doing today. We're gonna be making a brewing tower. Probably could have guessed from the title of the episode, but you know what? I'm just tired of going to random spots to get some potions, so it's time we get a dedicated spot for it. All right, well, this is pretty convenient. We actually have the other long play build right here. So there was three of them that we built. And this is the one that we built a few days ago. And I'm glad to actually have something built over on this side of the world. We can get a path from the ocean built over here to the other side. Or we can just keep going by boat. But over here, this is just a house that's built right on top of the end portal room. So this takes us right down there. It's fun making builds for everything. Even something that just covers up the entrance to the end portal room. Let's head on over to the swamp. I know it's a couple thousand blocks this way. Well, it looks like we have located the swamp. And we found our first little area of lily pads. Let's go down and just start annihilating. And we have our first little pool of lily pads down here. Let's uh, just start destroying the environment. I'll take this one, and I'll take that one, and that one. I'll take these over here as well. And you know what? The environment, you know, who needs it? Ooh, brown mushrooms. Definitely gonna need these if I'm gonna be making some fermented spider eyes for potions of weakness. This swamp really just has endless amounts of lily pads. I love it. Now we can place lily pads back in our own little home gardens. Right where they were always meant to be. I do believe it's nighttime. Let's take a nap right on top of the tree cube farm. Then we are going to fly right on back over to the ocean nether port. Ouch! Right over to the ocean nether portal and we'll go here. We got you, we got you. Hey, I see you out there. You know what? You gotta be gone, buddy. I told you to get out of here. I warned you. But yeah, I just thought that lily pads would end up completing this and it looks like it is. Now it did seem like the FPS was dipping just a tad bit. So I was thinking about doing a villager purge, but also I remembered we have a lot of cows. And so that's what I was talking about earlier. We're gonna get some leather. This leather is gonna be making a lot of books. Yeah, as you can see, these cows are here and they're ready to be leather. All right, what's going on guys? Didn't mean to do this, but uh, yeah, sorry, I have to get some leather. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you and thank you. My gosh, these cows are very loud. Definitely a lot quieter in here now. I'll get you out of here and you. And you know what? Let's get one more. I think it's you. Oh, cat. I almost got the cat. What's going on, cat? Man, we got a lot in here now. So that definitely helped out a little bit with the FPS. And then also stuff like this would help out. We have a lot of iron golems around the town. I'm just going to hit you. You can chase me if you want. But actually, you know what? He's just stuck and useless anyways. You've been rendered useless by your spawn. I will put you out of your misery. And then I will go over here and I'll take out your cousin. Hello, sir. You don't even want to know what just happened with the other guy. Come on over here and try to fight me. The thing about you is you can't even get through this fence. Hello. 
Stay out of my wheat field, sir, please and thank you. And another one, say ya. Then with the villagers, usually, uh, there's sometimes there's a couple villagers that are stuck down here, so we can just take these guys out real quick. And, oh, just the one. Sorry, dude. I don't want to have to do this, but it's a little bit too much work to take all the trap doors out, so, sorry. One of the main reasons for wanting to do the Brewing Tower this episode is because on Twitch streams recently, we have been actually curing all of these villagers from zombification over and over and over again to get the one-for-one -one trades on the sticks. For some reason, they went back to two. Some chatters in my stream were telling me that it was one just because these villagers watched their friend get cured, so there was like a bonus, and then it went back to the actual trade, which is now two. Which I thought was kind of just given false hope, so I don't even- why would they add that in the game? But yeah, it looks like all these guys have trades for two sticks now, which is, you know what, that's still way better than the original 32 stick trade. Take the sticks off my hands, I'll take your emerald, sir, thank you very much. And all of a sudden we have over six stacks of emeralds, this is just great. Take our new emerald stash and head on over to the cleric trading hall where we did the exact same thing. And actually, you know what, I don't know why, but it took me a while to get the interior decorated here. I just kind of put it off for a while, and we did it recently on the Twitch stream. But now we have 16 Cleric Masters all locked into place. And I didn't get them down to one for one on the zombie flesh, but we do have one for one on the glowstone trades. And it's not bad to have one for one on the ender pearls too. I'm never really trading for the nether wart, I'm never really trading for the zombie flesh, so everything else being a one for one is kind of nice. And I don't know if it's worth it to get a bunch of XP through Bottles of Enchanting, but we can just throw those up and down all day and get as much XP as we want. I think the thing I love most about this is now I can just get stacks on stacks of Glowstone easier than ever. I don't really mind going to the Nether to mine some, but a one-for-one -one trade, I mean, how can you pass that up? We went ahead and brewed up a bunch of Splash Potions of Weakness, and we have 36 Golden Apples left, which is, I mean, it's a lot, but we're gonna need a lot more. Thinking a trip to the Mesa Biome to get a bunch of gold is due pretty soon. But let's head back behind the trading hall over here, and usually there's a zombie or maybe two of them that are spawned. Okay, zombie, we got you right here, and actually let's just take you through. Okay, let's take you farther this way. I'm just gonna leave real fast. I'm gonna chill right here. You can just go make all these guys zombified. Sorry about that, dude. A few minutes later, and the zombie has done his job. I think all these librarians are now zombified. Let's go ahead and start splashing them with the potions. I'm going to start on the end over here so we don't waste any. I think just with that one splash, we got one, two, and then we got three over here. This is even louder than those cows. Oh my god. Eight splash potions later, and 24 golden apples later, we finally are curing all of them. Just shake it off, guys. All you got to do is shake it off. All right, after a couple minutes, I think, yeah, all of them should be cured. I'm looking at nine emeralds for a name tag and 13 pieces of paper for an emerald. I think that's that's not too bad, but we're going to have to go one more round. Let's go ahead and let that zombie out one more time, maybe two more times. Should still be back here. Where you at? But come on, buddy, get out here. Get on out here. I wonder if he can pass and I can just let that. Yes, that was perfect. All right, I'm going to run out. Put a dirt block right here, and I'm just going to chill right here until uh, it's all done with. Ooh, I can already hear it. Sorry about that guy. Look around the corner. Sorry, dude. And while we're waiting on all of them to get zombified, let's go over here and brew up a couple more splash potions of weakness, because we are out. This is probably going to be the last time we brew anything up in the starter house, because I'm probably, you know what? I, yeah, we need to build that brewing tower like right now. Let's get a fermented spider eye right here, here, and in the other two. We have potions of weakness here, then we're gonna throw some gunpowder in to make them splash potions. And leave these here brewing, and you know what, actually I was thinking, we have some goal boards. I don't think the brewing tower- oh god, that was fast. I don't think the brewing tower was on this one. We have sweet berries, kelp farm, glow squid farm, trading halls, nope, let's go over to the 1.20 goal board. Fly right over here, and I'm pretty sure we have a brewing tower right here. We did the new library, but we don't have a brewing tower on the goal board. I guess this is just a one-off. Well, it is something that needed to be done anyway, so it might as well have been on the goal board. Also, something I think is cool is that in the new update, all of the potions have different animations and colors. 
They used to, for the most part, look pretty much the same, and now they have different colors, which is nice to tell them apart. But I really don't want to have the storage for them up here in the attic of the starter house, so the brewing tower is going to come in handy. And, of course, now we need to choose where to put the new build for episode 44. I mean, over here behind the weaponsmith trading all we put the cat sanctuary recently, and then all the way over here we put the donkey sanctuary. It was over on the other side of the cartography trading hall. We have a lot of space to use right now. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of flying around and on the coast over here next to the big wooden dock I decided in this little field right here well it actually it's not gonna be so little once we clear out all of these trees we got birch trees over here we got oak trees over here and cherry trees that all need to go I'm to water bucket this whole area up clear some space and with this small field being cleared, we can put that right there, and let's get some deep slate up and running. I think we're actually just going to go 13 blocks across for this. Actually, looking at it from right here, it's kind of looking a little small, so let's expand it by maybe two blocks on each side. We'll just go one, two, run around to the corner over here, and we'll go one, two, and okay, let's go. Little bit of bing, little bit of bang, little bit of boom over here, and a little bit of bop. I can hear those sniffers sometimes from here. They do be sniffing always. So after one stream, we got a little bit of a tower going on right now. Just some deep slate tile and bricks and some cobbled deep slate on the outside. I don't necessarily have anything going on on the inside, but I think on the top of this, we're going to build a house. I was thinking about using the mangrove logs. Let me just start this right now so I can get a sense of what the color is going to look like. All right, so the reds are not looking too bad up here. I was actually thinking the entrance down on the front side over here by the dock, we actually had some spruce, but I think I'm actually going to change this to mangrove as well. Strip all these right here, and then we actually also need to finish adding all the oak for the entrance part. It's nice going back to the 1.19 roots here. Let's actually break some windows out. Let's go over here too, get one on this side. And now let's add the classic foundational stairs that we've been adding to all the builds. Seems like we also might be able to squeeze a little window back into here, and let's see, let's break through. I'm thinking we go stone stairs and stone brick stairs to start off. This build doesn't need to be entirely deep slate. Then I think we'll actually just slab it up into some stairs. Oak roof up here would look decent. Campfire's gonna look nice up here like they always do. Got the spruce trap doors up here instead of the oak trap doors. Normally we go with the same type of wood, but today we're switching it up. And we can hop down here. Let's see, we have ourselves a nice little house connected to the tower. And if you've been here long enough, you might know what's next. We're gonna go with the wall, the fence, the chain to lantern action on both sides here. Okay, not looking too bad. Actually, you know what we're gonna have to do is do this to the rest of the tower. Actually, so we don't have to keep using the scaffolding after this is done, let's build ourselves a staircase. Might as well get more color in here and just use a bunch of the stone. Spiral staircase building is just so therapeutic, I love it. All right, I think the staircase actually might be tall enough. Let's jump over here. We need to actually get some of the wall defense to chain to lantern action on the side here. We are actually going to use slightly different materials, though. We're going to go first off with the deep slate tile wall. Then we'll go to spruce with the chain, hooking up to the lantern. Then to make the colors pop, we're going to head back up here. We go with the clay flower pot with the dead bush and the flowering azalea leaves. Not too bad. I think we're going to do this all the way down. We got the azalea bushes going all the way down to the bottom. Well, almost the bottom. And on the top here, I actually wanted to get some glowstone because there's a little bit of space up here where it was a little bit dark. Cover that up with the oak trap doors. Actually, while we're up here, we will cover a little bit of this up with the mangrove trap doors. And we have all the windows covered up with some spruce trap doors, but uh, we're going to end up using some cherry trees for the decoration here. These cherry saplings are nice. What can I say? Up down here real fat ow, okay, and uh, let's use some jungle trap doors on all these campfires at the bottom to close this up. Normally we'd be using the spruce trap doors on something like this, but uh, we actually have spruce trap doors down here covering up the podzel. What are you doing down there, bud? Last thing I wanted to do before I forget was actually get some end rods on all of the corners of this build. Now we can hop down. I want to see what's up down here. What do you got for me, bud? Let's see here. We got cornflowers, blue dye, lily of the valley, pointed dripstone. I'll take the cornflower. Lily of the valley is not too bad. And I guess, you know, uh, I'll take your leads. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, sir. 
Also thought the end rods on the house down here, instead of using the lanterns like we did up on the tower, that might actually work out a little bit better, might make it a little bit more unique. I love all the options in this game. I mean, I'm looking at four of them right now. We got campfires, lanterns, end rods, and frog lights, even torches right here. But you know what? I mean, I'm always looking for more. Luckily, I have the birch buttons on me. Let's go ahead and throw these up because uh, you can never have too many birch buttons. In fact, I'm going all the way up here to put the birch button in between all of these mangrove trap doors. Let's get some end rods here. Then we can finally take the scaffolding down. Scaffolding is just kind of in the way here. I need to move it back also so I can start working on this mangrove top. And as far as this top section goes, I mean, this is going to look more like a house, but I didn't know what exactly to do. I started using composters as the wall, and I think I'm going to finish using composters as the wall because they're kind of nice. Easy to take down if I want to end up taking them down, and I think they're going to be a nice neutral brown color for the walls. I do think I'm going to go back to the composter, but in between on this little three block plane right here, I'm going to use some calcite. I feel like it's never a bad idea to add some calcite to your builds. Of course, it's raining again. It is always raining when I'm trying to record. Let's get the campfires on the roof again because you know it's gonna, it's just gonna make it look nicer. I know all of my other campfires would go out if this was a mechanic, but it would be kind of cool if there were certain times during the rain when you didn't have to take all of the campfires out yourself. It'd be cool if it just went out because of the water in the rain. But then it would be just uncontrollable and all of your other campfires would go out. So I get it. I can see why it's not in here, but it still would be kind of cool. Like if you want your campfires to be staying in the game, you have to put a cover over them. Luckily, we got those one for one campfire trades now. What's up, campfires? How you doing? We actually have to need to probably zombify these guys one more time so we can get the one for one coal trades. But it is nice when you run out of campfires now, you can just run back here and you don't have to spend too much. All right, so on the top level, we have these five by five squares. Let's just start off by taking out the two middle composters. Let's put a spruce stair here in the middle, and we'll use birch trap doors as the size of the windows. A little bit of glass. Okay, the window is done. I don't have any scaffolding with me, so I'm bridging away with some crafting tables. And okay, dude, I like that a lot. Birch button here and birch button here. Let's replicate that 11 more times and we are good to go. The roof took a good while to create here. I did that all on stream. It was actually a night stream. We worked, I actually streamed until past midnight that night. That was crazy. But we got the roof done here. We got four windows on the sides. And if you float down to the front yard, this little entrance here, it's actually done. I am loving this house. <laughs> this tower is so huge and so disproportionate to the entrance of the house. But if we head in here, we actually have almost everything set up. I was actually going to get some lights. In this room, I'm actually going to store everything that we're going to use to make the potions. Get a little bit of decoration going in here. Okay, we got a bunch going on in here. Let's get the ferns up. Let's get some cherry saplings. Oops, cherry saplings in here. And actually, let's get some light via end rod. We have blaze powder to fuel everything, also for the potions of strength. We have sugar for the swiftness potions, rabbit's foots for the leaping, glistering melons for the healing potions, and spider eyes for the potions of poison. Gas tears are going to be for regeneration, fire resistance with the magma creams, puffer fish are going to be making the water breathing potions, and then the night vision comes from the golden carrots. Finally, a reason to use the phantom membranes now. We can do potions of slow falling. And of course, we have all of the dust that we're going to be using. So we actually have the glowstone that increases the potency of all of them. The redstone increases the duration. And the gunpowder over here, this is actually going to turn everything into splash potions. Now in this room over here, we actually have everything set up to put all of the potions in. Actually in the corners, I wanted to put the crafting tables, and I didn't even complete the quarters. Back in the starter house real fast, let's just, uh, you know, let's just empty all of these brewing stands, take all these back home with us. Some cherry saplings up in here, it's all looking a little decorated, a little dark, that's why I want to get some saplings. The pink is always bringing out the color. And let's go ahead and start making some potions. We'll get the nether wart for some awkward potions. And we'll get some potions of poison. I've never actually used any potions of strength, so let's get a blaze powder up in here. It's kind of funny. You're using a blaze powder to make a potion out of a blaze powder. And I was thinking so that we don't have to go to the ocean repeatedly. And I don't know, just using the cauldrons. It's it's always out there, and I just wanted to do something different. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and use some deep slate, get some glowstone down here. Let's make ourselves some mini ponds in here. We have two completely full sources of water in here now. Nothing is ever going to go wrong. Let's actually fill these up and get a nice little uh, barrel over here. Fill it up with the water bottles. I don't think I've ever brewed up any potions of strength, but now we have a place to put it right up in here. And some small minor decorations can go up in the corners. 
Actually, while I'm putting up the amethyst right now, it's making me think amethyst shards could be a fun thing that you could put in a brewing stand and make a potion out of. Last thing we gotta do here is just spruce up the outside by just bone mealing around all the flat spots. And if you guys didn't notice, I actually downloaded the newest version of Complimentary Reimagined Shaders, and it looks slightly different from the beginning of the episode, and I think it looks awesome. Let me know if you guys have been using any newer types of shaders and you want me to check some out, because I've been using Complimentary and Complimentary Reimagined for a good while now, and if you guys have any other ideas, let me know. Look at that tower coming in from the fog. This is beautiful. I love having something. It's kind of like a lighthouse, but there's no... You know what we should do, actually, now that I'm talking about it, is build a lighthouse, like maybe over here. This is the last little area of this part of the city that's kind of empty. And again, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for showing up on all the Twitch streams, and thanks to all the YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Trying to get more tall stuff in this world built, and uh, honestly, this is a good place to start. This thing is enormous. I should actually really get a lighthouse set up next to it so it's not just a lone wolf up here. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I will be back very, very soon with episode 45. You guys take care. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here and welcome back to episode 45 of the Hardcore Minecraft Let's Play series. We are up here just AFK and for a little bit more iron and actually guys, I have some big news. We are one entire year into this world. I cannot believe it, dude. We have been building this world from the ground up for 365 days and I just want to thank you guys for being here from the beginning. This is the longest hardcore world that I've ever had, and man, I just, I can't thank you guys enough for being here. First thing I wanted to do today was head to the farmer's trading hall to get some zombification and curing done real fast. We're down in Ha Central, and we're gonna roll over here, and we have our zombie. Oh, he is ready to go. He's just ready to rumble. Let's just open that up, and we'll actually go this way. Go bam, bam. Now I'm just gonna wait right here, and uh, it's gonna be a couple minutes, but all these guys are gonna get zombified. Ooh, sorry, dude. Getting smacked up. Sorry about that, man. Ah, that's gotta hurt. Ooh, I do believe that's the last guy. Sorry, bud. Okay, so that's everybody. Let's start slapping him up with the splash potion of weakness here. I accidentally hit a button. Okay, let's just throw that down. Gotcha cured, gotcha cured, gotcha cured, gotcha cured, buddies. Just shake it off. All you gotta do is shake it all off. We actually only have 34 gold apples left. On stream, we went gold hunting for a little bit in the Mesa biome, and then people on stream actually reminded me that I should make a gold farm. So you know what? I think actually that is what we're going to be doing this episode, but we do have a couple things that we got to accomplish first. Those zombies are going to take about five minutes or so to get geared from their zombification, so I have an idea. We have a bunch of coal ore that we had found while we were hunting for the gold, so let's just go ahead and make a big old tower out of it, and, uh, you know, just get a little bit of XP, get a little bit of coal to sell. Our fishermen traders have pretty low prices on the coal over there, and our farmer traders right here, they're about to have some lower prices on the beets, the carrots, and the potatoes. Got the new potion brewing tower all the way in the back, by the way. Thanks for watching that episode, guys. We are far above the clouds. Let's just head back down. Sounds like all these guys are done now. They are back to normal. Nine for the wheat, not bad. Eleven for the carrots, not bad at all. I think these are basically just slashed in half from their originals. Thank you guys for the cheap melon and pumpkin trades as always. Now, in between this episode and the last, we had a few long plays come out per usual, and uh, there's actually on the way to the nether something that I wanted to fix, and that is a little bit of trapdoor action right down here. Now, we are replacing this with the trapdoors. I do this with most of the docks now, it just makes it feel like you're easing in from the water. I'm thinking some pressure plates outside would actually work a little bit. Get one on each of the four corners, because I always accidentally leave these doors open. Looks like we got another villager caught up in a boat, so I'm going to take a new boat, and we are going to take the nether highway down, about to go light speed. And if we go too fast, we might miss it, so I'm going to go over here, and boom. Okay, so let's go this way now. This tunnel is so long, but man, when you're in the boat on ice, it just it actually just takes like 20 seconds to get there. Big on, sir! Big on! So, first things first, what I wanted to show you guys was this. We actually excavated a brand new trail ruins and a brand new long play. Thank you guys for watching that one. If you did, we got so many building materials. Cobblestone for days, stone for days. We got a bunch of granite, dirt, grass, a bunch of birch wood actually from this old growth birch forest. Took almost three hours to get this thing entirely excavated. We ended up with a lot of good loot over here too. We got some music discs, we got some pottery shirts, and we have some shaper armor trim, which I hadn't found before with a couple other armor trims here too. 
I'm gonna have to slowly take all these materials back home. Before we go back real quick, I'm actually never gonna pass up an opportunity to take some Lily of the Valleys. I'm gonna stick to my roots, man. I still love the flowers the most out of any blocks in this game. Go back real quick. I, and I know I gotta finish this nether highway. We have been working on it on stream slowly. This is just in a very, very long hallway here, so it's it's taken a while, but let's just go back home real quick. I got one more build to show you. Now, this next build, it wasn't uh, really a necessity, but it's something that I kind of just wanted to try out. Hopping on the train tracks down here. Ouch, buddy, don't do that again. But uh, here we go. We have our fern farm. I used blocks from all the biomes that you would find the ferns in. So we have jungle wood, we have spruce wood, and oak wood. You can fly over here. There's actually something that I forgot to put on this. So I'm going to take some stone brick stairs and some stone stairs. And I wanted to put these on the bottom. I do this for every build. And just because it was in the water doesn't mean I'm not going to do it here. I mean, I did forget to do it in the video, but uh, here we are. Better late than never. Hold up, buddy. Wait a second. Okay, this one's an unnamed donkey. How did you get out? And okay, I think I see the culprit right here. Let's, uh, that horse was about to escape himself. Let's get you back in here. I don't, come on, buddy. Why are you doing that? Uh, actually, oh, damn, ham. Come on, you're supposed to be a better influence than that. Well, it does seem like the population of the donkeys is down. I think we're missing Dexter. And Mac the Mule. Mac the Mule is, yep, Mac the Mule is gone. Okay, let's go find him. Well, they couldn't have gone that far. I do see a horse and- and there's Mac. I see your little head poking up. Hey, buddy, I got some golden carrots. Follow me. Come on, dude. Oh my god, he is fast. Mac, I really hope you know where Dexter is. Maybe Dexter's actually out there somewhere. Get back in here, bubs, where you belong. Dexter, where are you? We will find you, Dexter. He's gotta be in this forest somewhere. Looks like we have pandas that have ventured real- Oh my, it's Perry the panda! What are you doing all the way out here, dude? Okay. Hold on. Dexter could not have gone this far. Wait. Dexter, is this you? Hold on. Dexter! Alright, follow me, buddy. Get the golden carrot. Come on now. Come on now, buddy. Oh man, he is not nearly as fast as the mule. This is- Why did you have to walk this far? Should have put a saddle on this guy. He just keeps stopping to eat grass. Come on now, Dexter. Let's go. Dexter, come on. Quit horsing around, man. This We, have, we don't have time for this. Let's go. I am not letting this happen again. Guys, keep an eye on each other. Stay in the donkey sanctuary. This is the best place for you. And while I'm actually over here, let's uh, pull up. I should, yeah, there's a bunch of bone meal right here. Let's uh, go ahead and turn this into a forest. Pull stacks of bone meal, and we're going to have a bunch of oak wood and a bunch of flowering azaleas. I got the shears right here. Let's just take these down. This right here, the flowering azalea leaves, that's what I'm looking for. If I can just get a couple stacks of these guys, that would be fantastic. I love how quickly these Azalea trees can just turn into a forest. It would be awesome if this was an actual biome that was pre-generated in the game. I think I might have said that before, but I'm still thinking it. I wish this was kind of a pre-generated biome. I mean, sure, yes, there are lush caves, but if we had this in the overworld, that would be... Oh, that was an accident. That would be pretty nice. And, of course, it's raining while we're trying to record, as it usually is. What's up, pups? I haven't said hi to you guys in a while. I hope you guys have been doing all right in the pup sanctuary. Keep doing you, bud. You just keep doing you. I'm gonna hop down here, though, into the purple block area because I need to make more end rods, and so uh, let's actually blast some of these guys down and, uh, you know, take what we need. I actually just turned the redstone off of this one here because, uh, you know, I just figured it'd be easier. The, the redstone doesn't really need to be taken. It all just kind of flows to one spot anyway, so I can just run, and there we go. We already have it collected. And put some of the azalea leaves back. We're going to have to get a lot more of those. But actually right now, let's go ahead and get some of these chorus fruit into popped chorus fruit. Mix those up with the blaze rods and get some end rods in a bit. Let's go ahead and put these back. And while we're up here, there's a couple things that I wanted to take care of as well. We have the phantom membranes right next to these chorus flowers. And I think we're actually just going to take these out and move them over to the potion brewing tower because they don't even need to be here. Actually, while we're here, we could also take these magma creams because instead of just using them to make more magma cubes, we could just take them to the potion brewing tower and make more potions this also is going to clear up quite a bit of space in the house as well oh my god we got a bunch of little dudes here this villager breeder is just pumping them out but what i was going to say is this is going to clear up a lot of space back home in the starter house so i can actually get more important items into more important spots a lot of these items that we use for potion brewing i don't really use generally so it's nice to get them out of the way over here still need to get these turtle shells going here we got to get a scoot farm going as quickly as possible and I'm kind of just realizing this right now, but this uh, potion brewing tower on all sides here, I'm pretty sure. Yep, I did not put any flower in this puzzle. So I'm thinking just pitcher plants and torch flowers is going to be the way we do it. Not just because these are the closest flowers to me, but also because I think they are the coolest. 
the newest and the coolest that's what we're gonna use slap these guys up on the left and right sides yeah that adds a lot of color to the bottom then we can literally go right next door and grab some of these right here and toss them right in the middle that's perfect some much needed color to this palette right here can add them over here as well. I don't think we have any torch flowers outside of the torch flower farm, which is, uh, I don't know, yeah, it's kind of weird. Shouldn't be isolating this guy right here. Let's get him all over. That bee is following me now. You can have one torch flower too, buddy. I still can't believe this is in the world. This is so tall. I love having this be the new tallest building. But having nothing very tall on this side to having this giant structure over here, I am absolutely loving it. And like I mentioned last episode, we just have this little space over here to build something in, and then the entire island on this side, for the most part, is complete. And then we can start venturing out into the waters over here, kind of like we did with this nether ocean portal over here. Ooh, we're trying to do a lot more builds like this guy. I love these things. Anything that's starting to look a little overgrown, it's uh, just more abstract and a little bit more fun to build, in my opinion. Looks like instead of turtles, we started catching some villagers down here, which I'm okay with, because you know what, if a villager is, uh, you know, if, if he's willing to get into that boat, he must want to be in that boat. Speaking of mobs that are captured, well, this one's not really captured, this one just kind of went up onto some scaffolding. We have this camel right here that doesn't have a name and kind of deserves a name. So I was thinking, oh my god, we named him Stu, and then he fell right off. Okay, he's no longer scaffolding Stu, he's just regular old camel. Oh, I'm actually, no, you know what, I'm sorry, Stu, you're not a regular old camel, you are Stu. I think what we'll do is we'll let Stu just run around the town, uh, he doesn't have to be in the camel sanctuary, we'll let those guys be in the sanctuary, and we'll, let, we'll just let Stu be himself. Taking a look at the minuscule amount of gold that we have before we head out, yeah, we definitely need a lot more, so let's go ahead and just take a quick trip to the nether. So, we are gonna be on the look for a bunch of magma blocks right now for this gold farm. Oh, god, I did not see that hoglin right there, buddy, what are you doing? So he's actually just scared of all the nether wards, so he won't even get to me. Buddy, you're gone. Get out of here. Get out. Striders, you are safe from all the hoglins. Stay cool, stay warm. I'm loving the way the new update on this complimentary reimagined shaders looks. This is really ominous. And oh, what's going on, Strider, in the distance? Uh, there's actually some magma blocks over here. Let's go ahead and perch up. You don't know it yet, sir, but you are going to be a part of a giant gold farm pretty soon. Let's just uncover this and take... Oh, there we go. Let's take... Oh, never mind. Oh, goodbye. So here's where we've been collecting some ancient debris on stream recently. This seems a little bit more safer right now. That other one was right next to the lava. Let's go ahead and take these out. I believe we're going to need a couple thousand magma blocks. It really just depends on how efficient you want your farm. But yeah, we're going to need a lot of these. So right now I'm on the look for another waste biome with a giant lava lake. We do have one right here, kind of close to our nether hub. So I might end up using this, but I want to see if there's one that's a little bit more open. A lot of lava lakes next to our house, but a lot of these are covered up by basalt deltas. It looks like a nether fortress over here. Yep, this is a big one too. We are running low on rockets. Man, this nether fortress is enormous. My god. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's none of these are really nether waste. We do have one right next to the nether hub. We could probably just end up going there. It's so hard to get lost now in this world because I've built nether highways everywhere. This one's not even done, but uh, I don't even remember where this one goes actually, but I'm, lucky. I'm glad it's here. Now, I don't have a boat on me, but this is a pretty easy ride home with some rockets. What's up, Mr. Cleric? How you been? How you doing? This guy's been around since, like, episode 2 or 3. I don't even know how long. It's been a while. How you doing? So this lava lake over here is actually pretty big, and uh, all we have to do is kind of spawn-proof this area right here, which pretty much just means putting slabs everywhere. And if we don't want to put the slabs everywhere, we could just actually just remove everywhere possible that they could spawn. We are in the nether waste biome right now, so the pigment are going to be spawning here quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking maybe just removing this would be a lot easier. And it actually doesn't seem like there's that much to remove. We can't go this way. I know it has to be 128 block radius. Let's fly up over here. I'm going to steal these mushrooms real fast and then take out this little island. Now, honestly, this shouldn't take too long. With a couple of streams, honestly, we can get this knocked out in a day or so. I do see a ghast. Sir, what are you doing? You know what? Maybe I can hit this guy from all the way up here. See ya. And back to work. Goodbye, island. It's time for you to be gone. Probably won't be saving any of this netherrack either. It's all fallen into the lava anyways, but I have a bunch of this already back home that I need to build with. Seems like we have another ghast causing some trouble. Say ya! Ooh, more magma blocks down here. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Get in the inventory. I think this process might involve filling up some caves here as well. Time for you to leave, sir. I've had enough of the gas today. Sir, don't make me... Thank you very much. 
After doing this for a couple of hours, you kind of start to realize that placing slabs is a lot faster than just kind of taking all of the blocks out. So as you can see, we started placing stone slabs absolutely everywhere. We have them all the way across over there. There's an occasional spot like this that's missing, but for the most part, we kind of checked all the caves and crevices on a four-hour stream. And by the way, twitch.tv slash waxfraud, come and join us anytime. There are so many areas that we have to cover in this game, and buddy, you're gonna have to move. Oh man, I'm sorry. I think what I'm going to do is just back up to this crimson forest right here and probably not much further because I don't think anything's going to spawn when we have the gold farm running. But I am glad that we got all this here. I'm trying to make this gold farm as efficient as possible so as many slabs down here as possible the better. Always little spots up here like this that we need to take care of so let's stone slab it up right here. These guys have started spawning all the way up here because I kind of took away every available spot for them down here. I'm not sure if they can spawn on the glowstone, so I'm just going to take anything that they can possibly spawn on up here just in case. And of course, you can see some hidden caves all the way up here that I wouldn't have seen before. Got to slab it up over here too. Okay, this ghast really has to get out of here. There you go, buddy. So I decided that I was going to build out in the middle of the lava lake here in the nether waste biome specifically. And I'm going to put some deep slate down here and build some chests. I did notice that there is actually a bastion out there. And uh, I need to pretty much get that slabbed up as well. Or we can take it down. It's up to us. But first, let's get a platform here. We're going to go deep slate tiles. Then we're going to actually get some chests down here. Get one more set and throw some hoppers under here too. I went a different route and put the chest right in the middle as well to give myself some more room if I'm going to make an entrance right here. So I actually watched a tutorial by Shulkercraft and it was pretty helpful when uh, trying to figure out what to do. I need some turtle eggs and a lot of magma blocks. I'll put the link for that video down below in the description. Next we're just going to build a tower out of the trap doors in the middle. Looks like these guys already started spawning here. I actually am now realizing I might want to take this down just a little bit. So I'm going to actually dig into the lava a little bit, take them out with some buckets. I'm just going to make a quick deep slate perimeter around this thing real fast. This means we got to go back, get some fire resistance potion because we're going to hop in the lava real quick. And that gives us a reason to go right back to our potion brewing tower that we built in the last episode. Slap some magma creams up in here real fast. Then we're going to slap some redstone in here to make them 8 minutes instead of 3 minutes. So we've done some villager relocation on stream as well, getting some from the other side by the starter house and brought them over here towards like the new cozy harbor and the new potion brewing tower. This whole area, it just needs more people. So I'm kind of glad to see these guys over here. They're wandering around checking out the new buildings. This weaponsmith right here is making himself right at home. So I got to thinking it might be a little easier also if I just fly over and use a little bit of gravel instead of using the buckets. Let's take one of these fire resistance potions down the gullet, throw that there, and I think we can just kind of hop in real fast and put the gravel wherever we want. So first I'm going to start by making this gravel wall right here. You can probably see it just a little bit outside of the flames that are shooting out of my eyeballs. Probably very hot, but I wouldn't know because I have a fire resistance potion. I also remembered we don't have to be on fire the whole time. We can stand above the lava a little bit sometimes. Now it's time to just start filling it in. Let's go. This right here is the real fun part. It also reminds me, I do want to drain an ocean monument pretty soon. Trying to get that done before the world tour world download on episode 50. My fire resistance potion ran out, which means I've been doing this for eight whole minutes. This is taking a little bit longer than I thought, and this bastion has just kind of been calling my name. I think we should fly over here real fast and just take a gander and see what type of chest and treasure they got over here. We gotta be extra careful. There is definitely going to be a piglin brute over here. Seems to be an extra lot of zombie pigmen over here, be probably because we took away all the other spawn locations for them. And this kind of seems like it would be a little bit of a hassle to slab up. Yeah, spawn proofing seems like this would take a good long time, so maybe we should just kind of start taking the whole thing down. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I have not seen one piglin here. I've just seen a bunch of zombified pigmen. I wonder if they're just taking up all the spawns here. Let's try flying around the other side. Oh, there's definitely going to be some gold in this one for sure. Never mind, I spoke too soon. We have our first piglin. Let's go. How you doing, buddy? I'm definitely not here to tear down your home. Let's fly to the other side so he doesn't think I just totally lied to him. And uh, let's just start taking everything down piece by piece, block by block. Now, I do have to remember we are well past 6,000 days and I have done a lot on a bunch of different streams. I'm going to run in here. I did see a chest and I am not sure if we have explored this chest before as soon as... Oh, no way. Snout armor trim. 
Okay, was not expecting that, because this is right next to my nether hub, so that's kind of confusing. I thought we had to go pretty far. This was this was an already generated bastion, so it turns out if there's any chest that you haven't opened yet in an already generated bastion, it might have some armor trims. That's honestly pretty sweet. I'm going to take this gilded black stone as well. I'd like to get enough of this to be able to make a giant build out of it. But for that, we'll probably have to take out a couple of these bastions. What do you know? We found some more. I think what we're going to have to do is probably end up doing this on stream. We've been doing a lot of Twitch streams. We might do a YouTube stream pretty soon. Okay, I do hear a piglin brute or just a, a whole horde of piglins down here. I'm not sure where, but they are here somewhere. After we get all this polished blackstone, all of this gilded blackstone, and all of the cracked blackstone, we'd probably be able to make a nice looking build. Okay, we found a hidden chest. I'm going to actually block off everywhere possible they can get in right here. And what's in here? Oh my god, another snout armor trim? Let's go. Hello, sir. I'm not here for any particular thing. I'm just, I'm just here to take down your entire house all the way down to the lava, if, if you don't mind. Okay, this gas has got to go. I think I can hit it from here. Oh, and oh! Don't mind me, buddy, just taking your house down. As you can see, we got the entire front side of the bastion completely excavated. So far, we've filled up a bunch of double chests of a bunch of blackstone and basalt and all the goodies from the chests up in here. Oh, buddy, get out of here, please. Did I just kill that ghast with a pickaxe? That's crazy. Now this has become Magma Cube City Nation up here. We gotta take the rest of this blackstone. Where's there? There's another ghast? Where? Oh, God, hold up. Where you at, buddy? It's no, sir. You're gone. We are way too exposed to the gas out here now, but uh, as you can tell, the Silk Touch pickaxe, it is basically at its end. Fly over here. I did see a very small idea, and I do like this for a quick little XP farm. It seems like there are zombie pigmen absolutely everywhere over here, so let's just shoot one of them, and let's run. Got our looting three sword. We're just going to chill right here, and these guys are just going to chill right below us. As they push themselves in here, you can just start whacking away and uh, grab some XP. Dude, there's like 50 of these guys over here, man. And aghast, please get out of here. Please leave, dude. We, you're not wanted. Just, yes. These little guys down here. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Honestly, got a fair amount of gold from that. That's, that's not too bad. That was like two minutes of just hacking away at these guys. Perching like a bird off the beacon up here. Thank you, beacon, for all the help. You actually saved quite a bit of time, but, uh, yeah, this thing is done, dude. We have completely excavated the bastion, and now all we have to do is kind of just slab it up. Put some slabs over here. Buddy, you gotta go. It's time for you to leave. Gotta slab up around all these chests. Actually, we gotta take all this back home, too. We have so much blackstone. I'm pretty excited about all this. You gotta get out of here, sir. And you gotta get out of here, sir. There are so many gas, but let's head over back to the gold farm real quick. I started replacing the first layer with some magma blocks. So the bedrock above here only goes up to about 127 Y level. So I'm trying to get these magma blocks kind of as low as possible. So we're going to build down a bit. You're kind of in the way, dude. Next, we're going to head down two levels here, count two blocks, and just make an entire another level of magma blocks. Carve out the same little square here for every level mesmerizing with the shaders and all these magma blocks above and below. Should probably keep drinking these fire resistance potions so I don't get burnt constantly. That's that's a lot quieter. Now we can finally build this farm in peace. We're gonna put some glass around the edge on the gravel here so it can be spawn proofed and so that we can also still see in here. And apparently zombie pigmen are attracted to turtle eggs. So what we're gonna do is slap one up right in the middle and then we will start to slap up some trap doors here as well. Okay, we're gonna close these up, and there we go. Okay, so now we have something that the pigmen will fall into. I don't know what it is they have against turtles, but they really don't like these things. And I don't think you have to have this many, but I'm gonna slap one up on every level for max efficiency. And we'll build this just a little bit taller here. We have our final turtle eggshell hooked up right here at the top row. Some of these guys are getting hooked up. You can see the hopper system all the way down there. We are way up here now. We're at the ceiling. I've already seen a bunch of mobs falling all the way to the bottom, so I'm excited to see how much we've already gathered. So we have 20 rows stacked up right here. This is insane. I did not expect the gold farm to be this much work, but here it is. See you later, dudes. But, oh, looks like he might need some help. See you later, dude. It does look like for the row under here at the very bottom. Oh, we have a magma cube down here. What's going on, buddy? Whoa, buddy, you can be gone. Let's, uh, all right, but you guys, all right, get out of here, man. This is not a magma cube party. Some of the guys are surviving the falls here, and I think it's because of this bottom level here. 
All these guys in here are about to get really mad, but uh, sorry, dude, and so, sorry, dude, sorry, dude. Not really much these guys can do about it. I'll just break this, and you can get out of here, and you can get out of here, and see ya, buddy. As you can see, we are all the way down here at the bedrock, and we need to figure out how to decorate this area now. Get some magma cubes up in here. Well, what do you know? The soul campfires don't work on these guys. If that's the case, then we're just going to have to set this guy up here. I'll have to set this guy up here. We'll set this up here, and we'll probably just have to do this. Well, let's see what we got here. We got a lot of rotten flesh and a bunch of gold nuggets. You know, that's not that bad. It's safe to say that we have ourselves a working gold farm. I'm eventually going to have this ice pathway hooked up right to the center of this gold farm. So I think it's only right that we take some stone bricks and use that as the decoration on the outside. This is going to be a very tall and a very skinny tower. I'd also like to start making a barrier right about here. And I like it when our builds are set up with spacing by three. So let's go over here and we'll build up a tower right about here. We have reached the ceiling. Let's go ahead and just make that go right up into there and boom. Tower one complete. Let's get 15 more of these going. Some of these guys just get stuck. You know, not everybody's perfect. See you later, buddy. Smack this one out of here. Let's glide down and let's take a look. Okay, you know what? That's not too bad. We definitely got to get one in the middle here. Double hopping as fast as we can up here. Okay, now we can break this. Let's fly over here and take a quick turn. And you know what? That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and let's fly back. Let's connect this ice highway right up to that gold farm. We got a long way to go, but we're going to start bridging out with some blue ice. I love how we're just bridging over molten lava right past some falling lava, and it's not supposed to make sense, but yet it does. Let's just back it up with the buttons here next, and I think what we're going to do in between these columns is use the different color of frog lights. Actually, never mind. We are back in the cleric trading hall because I don't want to use some frog lights. I think we're going to stick with the glowstone, so let's trade it up. So in between all these little towers here, let's actually just perch on the corners. And instead of the frog lights, let's just go up with the glowstone. In the middle, I'm thinking we're going to use glass so that we can actually see into the farm to see what's going on here. But on the sides, it's going to be nice and shiny. We have this middle row right here on all four sides. We'll plug this up with some glowstone too. Then we need to just set ourselves on fire for a moment. I'll hop up here. We get some stairs going right there, and I'm going to actually invert these all the way up. Flat side, right side up, flat side, right side up. Till we get to the very top, then we gotta figure out how to go about this. There we go. Drop down real fast, take a quick turn around, and see what we're looking at so far. We got the highway hooked up to the very front, but I'm not sure how we're gonna hook it up with the stone. Maybe we should just create a little bubble over the glass on the top of this. There we go, we have this all plugged up. Let's go ahead and fly back in the tiniest little opening. Now this is a very ominous looking gold farm. The only thing, I think we need to get some decoration on the outside columns. We're gonna go down here. I'm actually going to put the ender chest right here and we'll take out this chiseled. Sorry about that, bud. Get that replaced with the crafting table. This ender chest actually has everything that we are gonna need to decorate the outside corners. It's rare that we get to use scaffolding in the nether. I guess I just need to build here more often. I think in this level right here is probably where we're going to want to start, and that's because I want to go over next to the actual hallway itself. We'll have one extra fence over on this side, and we will get the trap doors right above it. Not too bad. Dude, please, not here, not right now. I'm going to get you out of here before it's too- there we go. We'll go up every few blocks or so, and we will get this pattern repeated. Dude, there's gas every- oh, okay, hold on. There are gas always everywhere, so you don't have to be here, but yet you are. All you're doing is exploding the netherrack and it's making more spots that they can spawn on. We have a lot of work to do. Let's, uh, let's get these corners decorated. Well, all right, that's not too bad. We got the lights absolutely everywhere. I think I'm gonna head down here to the very bottom. We can take out this netherrack. Actually, I did forget. We do need to place some of the stone blocks up there. Gotta make this thing actually look like a bridge. Let's remove our temporary bridge. And okay, the real bridge is not looking too bad. Let's get a side view of it. Let's get down on the level over here, and ooh, I like that, except that netherrack is in the way. We'll also get some of these campfires right here. This netherrack out of here, and then let's replace this glass and close everything up. This guy is freaking out for some reason. Dude, are you okay? What, what's going on? Now, as far as this room goes for the collection system, I thought it would be a little easier and more fun if we just decorated it with lava. 
We got three more down here to cover it up. Two and three. Close this back up right here. Now we can fall down the ladder. We can look at the gold farm itself until we get to the actual stage where the lava is falling down in the chamber. Get all the way down into the basement where our collection system is. And during the time of constructing this thing over the last couple of hours, we've got a couple of golden nuggets here for us. This is going to make a decent amount of golden apples for us. Honestly, could not be any happier that we have a working gold farm right now. This is amazing. Decorate a small amount in here. Oh, God, that noise is kind of crazy. And uh, we'll get some torch flowers down here so it looks a little bit nice. As long as some crafting tables are down here, we will be able to turn all of these gold nuggets into golden ingots. Well, this tower sure is crazy. I have never built a gold farm, and this guy is still going nuts down here. I wonder what his deal is. But yeah, I have never really built anything like this, and I'm super glad to have done it in this world. Guys, I do want to thank you again for joining on all of the live streams while we were building this. This took a couple of them. Not today, dude. I'm trying to do my outro. Anyways, thank you guys so much for all of the support and for watching. I do appreciate y'all. Hi, everybody. Wax Fraud here, and welcome to episode 46 of the Hardcore Minecraft Let's Play series. We are currently down in the gold farm. These guys are hanging out. They don't really need to be here. You can be gone too, buddy. But we have got a lot of gold nuggets and a lot of rotten flesh just after a couple hours of chilling down here. So we have a bunch of gold ingots that we're putting away here, and that's kind of a lot for just this little farm here. This thing seems to be working just fine. We also have a bunch of rotten flesh that we can take to the cleric trading hall. Head back up to the top in the nether highway here, and this guy is still freaking out. I'm not sure what about, but he's just been running around constantly for a couple of days. Something that we did add on stream to the nether highway is the hanging signs here. We now have it labeled on both sides where the gold farm is. We can go down here to the next door. If you want to take a turn to the stronghold, you know exactly where to go now, and uh, all that's left is to pretty much turn this little nether hub into a nice little home. Wouldn't you like that, buddy? And I bet you would like that too. Appreciate the sale, sir. Probably shouldn't have traded with that guy, because that was 32 flesh for one emerald, and we can go in here and get a lot cheaper. Let's actually take all this out. Yeah, it's like 22, which is, I mean, not much cheaper, but you just, you could zombify these guys twice, and you get it 10 cheaper. I am sorry, dude. I did not mean to smack you. Now it's up at 23. I'm sorry. Honestly, though, it doesn't matter how cheap it is, because what else are we doing with the rotten flesh? At least we have some emeralds we can get out of it now. Sir, what is this? I thought we talked about this, and buddy, over here, what what are you doing? I, I thought we talked about this, guys. There's plenty of other places where you can go that you're not going to get stuck with the azalea bushes. I'm willing to bet if I walk around the side over here, there's going to be a couple more that are stuck. Why are you doing this to me? I All I want to do is decorate my house, and you're not letting me. How about you just go uh, reintegrate yourself into society, so thank you very much. Before we get started today, we're going over to the long plays to show you guys real quick. First was this lush melon field that we had created. Thank you guys for watching this video if you did. This one was super fun. We have an entrance coming from the north side up here. We have a dock on the south side. And an entrance all the way over here on the west side going up to the cozy starter house. Feels very good to have this space filled up over here. I was trying to think of what buildings to put here, and you know what? Sometimes it's better to put no buildings. Sometimes a lush melon field is the answer. Next, we're going to go over to the diamond ore crane in the ocean over here. This one was extremely fun to build. We do have another ore crane all the way on the other side, but it wasn't specifically made for diamonds, nor was it in the ocean. I am in love with this thing, though, because there's been nothing in this empty void of an ocean space here, and now we finally have some stuff that's starting to take it up. And thanks again for watching this video, too. I do appreciate y'all. I know a lot of you guys are here for the Let's Play videos, but the long play videos do allow me to get some extra building out of my system. I was going to go back home, but actually, before I forget, there's the Moss Dome right here, and on stream, we had recently updated this little area. There are not enough ponds in this world, and we had recently decided that. So, voila, we officially have a brand new pond. I wanted to start adding a couple more of these, because I haven't really built a pond in this world since the Alpine Pond on Rainbow Mountain, or just a little ravine. I don't have to do this, but I'm going to because it's really fun. Sorry, buddy, you can just get out of my farm. You don't need to be in my farm. Most of the time, you're safe in the village, but if you're in my wheat field, you just, you gotta be gone, sir. I'll add your iron to my little stash here, and I'll add the roses to my bone meal farm. And while we're on this side of town, we're just going to shave off some of the cow population. My bad, guys. Here we go. You know what? We just need a little bit of leather. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all the hard work you guys are putting in to get me that leather. Yeah, I heard a cat and... Oh, I see the cat. Buddy, come over here. I have some salmon. That was very easy. Most cats just run away for a while. There you go, buddy. We've actually managed to catch a couple of cats, and uh, so I'm actually going to take a couple of these back with me. So I think we have three cats to take back to the cat sanctuary here. 
Please, guys, follow me. None of these cats are following me. They're all just trying to go back inside the starter house. Why? Why are you guys trying? I have a cat sanctuary now. That is not your bed, sir. I'm just going to try hopping really far away and see if they will follow. That is a good kitty. He is following. The other two kitties, not so much. This guy seems to be the only one that follows directions. Oh, never mind. We got more kitties here now. Let's go. All you gotta do is keep on moving and the kitties will find their way. Let's head in here. Let's head down the stairs. All three of those cats should make the one, two, and where's the third one? Ah, there you go. Let's get you right there. And boom, we now have like 50 cats in here. Now there is one cat that's going to stay here in the house. And uh, he's going to give us gifts when we go to sleep right here. And for that reason, his name will be Santa. Thank you, Santa, for being here. Santa is going to be our house cat, the one and only. You know, I figured we should probably just get some of these books before the trading gets a little too complicated. It's going to be easy right now. So you know what? Why not? Now, I don't know if you guys have heard about the Villager update in 1.20.2 that's about to come out, but the pre-release is out, and I saw that we're going to have to stock up on some books, or we're going to have to go to new biomes. Sounds like you have to go to the Swamp Biome and the Jungle Biome in order to get some Villagers to trade you Mending. So, for right now, I'm just going to take a couple of these, like, Efficiency 5 books right here, and absolutely load up on the Mending books. We got the One for One trades now, so let's go ahead and put these in here. I think we're going to keep this trend going where we just completely ignore our goal boards because, uh, you know, why not? Let's just, uh, let's get a little creative and think of some stuff that's outside of the box. There's plenty of biomes in this game, but there's a couple that we haven't really explored yet. And there's some that we have seen on stream, but we really just kind of flew over. When the 1.20 update came out, I was doing a lot of exploring in the deserts, looking for a lot of suspicious sand and the camels. In the midst of all of that exploration, we ended up finding an ancient city, which we have yet to explore. We will definitely be going there soon. And we also ended up finding a mushroom island, so you know what? I think that's where we're going to end up going today. One last thing before we make our way out there. I wanted to head to the other side of the island here, or island number two, rather. There was a Savannah Villager transport system that I had set up, and I got everything underground, and they all started moving over here. But once they actually get located over here, they kind of start just dancing in this little area, making their way back over there, but never really getting into the water. And maybe it's because they don't really have, like, a town system some set up over here there's some beds but we could set up some more beds so i brought like five over we'll just slap that down here get those trap doors up and get the signs on the side and we'll do this a couple more times this guy seems to be okay well you know what we'll just and this guy oh my god is this guy stuck are you stuck he's oh my god all right he's <laughs> this is why do they do that this bed going right here not too bad and you know what actually don't mind any of these guys these are going to be the new setup for another iron farm over here because why not double up on the iron? That's for a later episode, though, because we are going to be quadrupling up our design for the previous iron farm. Be getting a bed right next to these guys over here will help them out. Now there's a peaceful park bench that's overlooking this peaceful pond right here. This is nice. In between the goat sanctuary in here. What's going on, goats? How you doing? And on the other side would be the armorer trading hall. I think let's just go ahead and place the bell right here. That way, there we go. I see the sparks. Now these guys shouldn't really want to go home all the time. They might want to go back to that bell and make this their new home. We will have to give them some time, though, because it was probably really hard on them, you know, just getting uprooted from the village. This is now your new life, though. You will not be remembering anything from the old life. Also, you're in my bed. Thank you, sir. You should be in the gold farm, sir. What are you doing here? You know what? Get out of here. Be gone. Ow! That was sharpness two on there. That did some damage. It would probably be a good idea to block the entrance to this nether portal so stuff stops going in there. Let's load it up with some deep slate tile walls and some spruce fences right here. Okay, that should hold until we get a more definite structure for this thing. I think I want to get the iron farm with these guys taken care of first, and then we'll get a new nether portal. Plus, we just built one in the ocean, so uh, we can wait a little bit. Let's head back to the starter house real quick. I'd like to get a couple more rockets and a couple more golden carrots for the journey so we don't run out. Take some of you right here. Let's go over here. I'll take some of you too. Looks like this guy's stuck on the dripstone. There you go, dude. Go get a job. Why don't you... There you go. Sometimes I feel like I need to watch these villagers to make sure they keep doing their job. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's get out of here. I trust these guys to do some work. Let's go find this mushroom island. Now, if I remember correctly, we're going to go right over Rainbow Mountain, past the desert, and even past the Mesa. 
It's been a while since we worked on Rainbow Mountain 2 also. We need to get a dedicated stream going so we can do a couple extra layers. I think I see one mushroom. Oh, no, I see a couple mushrooms through the rain. And of course, it's always raining. And I think I see... Yep, that is a sunken ship. Look at my shadow with the shaders right now. That is insane. I love that. Let's get in here. I'm wondering, since I did a lot of exploring in this area, if I already hit the ship. But uh, there we go. It's always worth the shot. Gotta be something under here, too. And, of course, there's paper. And I never really understand this, but why is there a buried treasure map, but it's blank? I'll pull it out, and I'll do this. And now it's just a- now it just is a map. It's just a buried map. It's not a buried treasure map. Anytime I'm trying to do the fun stuff while I'm recording, it is always starting to rain. And hello to the mushrooms. What's good? How are you doing, buddy? It is good to be on a mushroom island. What is going on, mushrooms? Baby mushroom, how you doing, dude? Let me tell you, the cowage on this island is absolutely insane. These guys are all looking for some wheat. You know what? Let's make some baby mushrooms right here, right now. We can never have enough baby mushrooms. What's going on, guys? Now, other than the mushrooms and the mushrooms themselves right here, we have one more thing that people come to the island for, and that is the mycelium right here. Look at the effects coming off this. Mycelium is crazy, and it spreads super fast. I'd like to grab a bunch here right now. I don't think I've gathered the mycelium block since I was playing on Bedrock on the console edition. Get this up in the inventory. Looking good, mycelium. Looking very good. And you know what? I actually always forget that this is the perfect place to start in the hardcore world. No aggressive mobs can spawn on this island, and that makes it the safest place possible. We could build a barn here, but I'm thinking since we've been making our city grow so much, I think we're going to take these guys back home with us, but we are going to build something over our transport system. Before we build anything, though, I'm just going to gobble up the rest of this mycelium. There might not be an island left when I'm done gathering all this. The easiest way to get these guys home is to create a nether portal. I want to bring this guy into the nether with me, and he just walked right through the portal. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Probably because I haven't even used it yet. Let's go through and just make sure everything's safe first. And right off the bat, there's two gas right there. Okie dokie. Let's, uh, let's just shoot you. Get away. Sir, stop. Please don't. Stop doing that. Ooh, looks like we have another fortress right here, too. We did fly a couple thousand blocks away from home, so we have a nice little nether highway to make. No wither skeletons and no blazes. This seems to be a relatively quiet fortress. And there's the tunnel, and there's our home. All right, let's head right back up the chute here and go see exactly where we need to build the new highway. So if you want to line this up right, you do have to divide your coordinates by eight in the overworld to get to the portal in the nether. And you know what? On our way there, let's stop and get some frog lights because uh, it's about time. Hello, Sir, you can be gone. You can be gone. Get out of here. You chose the wrong time to be here, sir. You're gonna be a frog light. You're gonna be a frog light. You're gonna be a frog light. We'll just lure all these guys over here into double trouble, and uh, we're gonna go. Oh, it's already begun. Um, hello? What are you guys not? Oh, dang! What are you doing? What are you not doing in the battle arena? Get in there. You too, sir. Let's get in the battle arena. Come on. See, this is fun. This is one of the most fun farms to hang out in. All you have to do is just smack a couple magma cubes around for like 20 minutes, and you get a couple stacks of all the colors. And I know I probably should be using some powdered snow to make it a little bit more efficient, but honestly, this way is a little bit more fun. Okay, I did just notice that one frog is missing, though, and in the past, we have noticed a couple of frogs that have just gotten loose. I'm not sure how that happens. It's probably a little bit of a render glitch, but okay, and the ghast can... You are not welcome here, sir. I'm gonna get you out of here before you see me. Goodbye. I do not see this frog. He might be down here, but I, I don't see a frog yet, but if we do, I'm, I'm gonna get him back up there. And, oh, there's the lead. So there is a missing frog. He couldn't have gone far. He's probably here somewhere. I'm hoping that he didn't just jump off the edge. He'll come back home. I just know it. Was it you, sir? I'm not going to look direct. Oh, I looked at him. I looked at him. I got to get out. Well, that's actually kind of strange because I'm pretty sure I was not even looking directly at him. I'm going to get in here. He can't come in here. What a dummy. And I forgot to wear my gold. Dude, do not hit my frogs. Let's keep these gold leggings on. I don't want any mishaps. I have my pants on, but I don't trust you near my, uh, my loot. So get out of here. Get out. It's looking like a magma cube massacre over here. Okay, so right now we do have plenty. Probably enough to complete the highway. Let's hop right past the blaze farm and also past the fortress. Well, after about a three hour stream, we got most of this nether highway completed, but now we just need to get the frog lights in. So I'm glad that we stopped there to get more. There's that fortress looking nice in the distance. We'll have to go there. I wonder if there's some good loot. 
Got all this done. Now we just need to lay the glass down. I accidentally was off by just a little bit. If we go back over here, our portal is actually set up like five blocks this way. So I should have gone over one set, but it's okay. We can just dig this out a little bit and move the portal. Let's break this portal real fast. Thank you very much, sir. I'll use that obsidian later. Let's go ahead and hook this one up and hop through. I think we should have this one connected. And perfect, we are back. Yes, okay, we officially have a connection. Waking up from our first nap ever on the Mushroom Island. This is just, man, this is great. Before any of the Mushroom go through this portal down here, we need to make sure this is safe. So we have to go ahead and plug up the end here. We gotta get all the stone on the side here, all the slabs in between so nothing can spawn. Then we just need to get all of this covered up with glass. Nothing is getting in or out of here. The last thing we want right now is a bunch of gas trying to give us some trouble while we're getting the mushrooms down here. Crazy how all it takes is a thin layer of glass to get you protected from the nether. Now, we can't just leave this an open nether portal. We gotta build something on top of it, so let's clear out a little bit of space here. Gather up some of the mushrooms that we were gonna plan on getting anyways. I'm gonna bring these back home. Go ahead and make a little bit of a flatter area in front. I'm thinking we're just gonna make a small hut here, so let's just start off with some spruce logs on the corner. Hello, sir. You're supposed to be at the gold farm, and this is exactly the reason why we're putting glass on the portal. See ya, dude. Now we're just going to go ahead and get some oak on the interior. Basic barn structure is down. We're gonna do some wall to fence to chain action here. We'll hook this up with a bunch of the fence gates. Next, we'll start going up with a brick and a granite rooftop. Did I hear a pigman? I, oh, okay, hold on. Buddy, this island is not for the undead. What are you doing, sir? Get over here right now. Come and fight me. Yes, and big on. Get some iron walls going for some windows on this thing. We'll get some lighting on the side with some wall defense to chain to end rod action here. And we'll get this repeated all the way around. Then we'll finish this little awning design here with the fences and the chains. Now I feel like we just need some lighting on the roof. Let's fly up here real fast. Looks like we have a missing stair right here. So let's plop that in. Get the tall light up here. We'll get some lights up in here. Close this window up. Lights on the windows, and can't forget the lighting on the corners. Some flowers hanging here would look nice. Surround this place with torch flowers on the ground. I feel like it's only fitting to get a couple of these end rod lamps around town like we have in the overworld. In the overworld, we're doing it because we need to spawn proof, but here we're just doing it because it looks nice. I figured let's get some overworld flowers in, so the azalea is going to do right there, and the spore blossom, I figured let's put that in this build. Now we got some particles on the ground, and we got some particles in the air. Looks like I built this whole building one block over too far, so now we gotta move the nether portal. Okay, so now we can relight this guy right here. Perfection, and let's get some hay bales set up on the outside. And then we can probably start to get these guys in here. Let's just turn some of this into wheat, and we'll move these guys through the portal. Come on now, buddy, follow me, please. Let's go this way. Buddy, let's get you through the portal. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Man, that thing is la- Oh, perfect. Okay, so you're already here. Let's get you in the boat. There we go. And now we can go light speed down our brand new tunnel. We are looking great in here. We also have the sign hooked up for Mushroom Island. This is looking fantastic. I was thinking we actually take the Mushroom Sanctuary over to island number two. So let's crawl over to this portal. And of course he's stuck. Let's break that boat. Get over here, bud. I think we have the perfect spot to get this guy to. So right here, the iron farm is probably going to go here. So I was thinking, let's go across. We do have a lush land bridge that we built a while back. Looks like we caught a sheep on our way there. But I was thinking it'd be fun to head to the other side over here. I have never built anything. Oh, we have a zombie over there. Which means there could be some creepers around. Let's uh, let's be on high alert. Okay, first things first. Let's uh, Let's clear the space for this guy. Let's take out all these trees. My guess is we're going to have to take out this grass, so let's start doing it now rather than later. Oh man, I really thought that I had cleared up enough here, but I definitely did not. Let's, uh, man, we got to keep going, I guess. Let's take this layer out here. And the auto sorting system is feasting today. We have been coming over here quite a bit, placing a bunch of dirt and a bunch of grass. Let's see how big we can make this thing. It's not going to be a small sanctuary. I think we're going to go back to using some composters for the wall for this also. Got a little bit carried away with the design here. We actually switched out the spruce logs for the oak logs over here. We got a little bit of work to do on the stone part of the build. I started putting the details in, like the spruce buttons in with the oak trap doors in on these oak logs. The composter walls are looking nice. As you can see, we have brick and granite for the roof again, just like how we did back on the Mushroom Island. 
We started an awning right over there on the front part of the build. I think we're gonna do one on this side as well. We usually use these spruce stairs over the composter walls just for a little awning for the windows, but this time I'm thinking we do something different. Let's actually just get some spruce trap doors in there. We'll take that out. Let's get a flower pot and a red mushroom over every window. Not looking too bad right here. I think we'll just end up using the birch fence for the windows here. Got a lot of different colors going already, but I do like it. We don't do this often, but I think we're also going to be using some birch planks on the roof. Initially, we were going to do the jungle wood up here, but then I thought, you know, it's a little bit too close in color to the granite and the brick, so birch is the way to go for right now. Get some spruce trap doors in between all these campfires here. Get the brick walls hooked up on the corners on this thing. Connect it with the fence walls and the chains. Then we just load up the lanterns up here and the flowering azaleas, and there you go. Close this up here, and all right, we have a little bit of an area for the mushroom to walk out into. We're gonna get the same birch wood going on the top level here. Composters do look nice on the bottom level, but I left this top level open because I thought it would be cool to have a different block, and that I'm thinking is gonna be calcite, so let's fly up in here. Think it'd be nice to start getting this layered up. And I always forget how nice the sound of placing down the calcite is. Break this down a couple levels and not too bad. Yeah, I like that. It's darker down here, a little bit lighter up top. Let's go right here. We'll take out this level for a window. And I think we're going to use the same lighting that we did down there. We have the brick walls, the spruce fences, and the chains leading up to the end rods here. That's not looking too bad. Got to get the diorite stair overhangs with the calcite here because that is the best matchup that we got. Unfortunately, still no calcite stairs. Those would be absolutely amazing, but uh, for some reason, I just, I don't believe we're ever gonna get them. Let's hop over to the lush land bridge over here and take a quick look at the build so far. Not too bad, I really like this. Got mushrooms up and down this build. We ended up using the jungle wood on the roof as well, just for the trap doors. And if we go in here, this is actually not looking too bad. I think it's almost time for the mushrooms to be able to move in. Just got to keep loading up here with the azaleas. Looks like we are two clay pots short here, though, so we actually are in luck. We can go right over to the masonry over here. Got a little trading hall where we can buy some bricks. What's going on, buddy? Thank you very much. Appreciate the bricks. Don't mind if I do. Thank you, dude. Let's go over to the crafting table. We got one, two, three. That's a quick 64. One, two, three, and that's another quick stack right there. We were also going to use these on the upper part of the roof up here. I've never really done this before, but I wanted to use some upside down stairs and then go ahead and put some azaleas right on top of them. Also, I don't know if anyone noticed, but uh, we did use shroom lights inside for the lighting instead of the glowstone. But as far as the ceiling goes in here, we kind of loaded it up with some end rod chandeliers. Speaking of, I got the two right there. Yeah, I didn't get the middle one right here. Let's go up right there. We did most of this interior on a Twitch stream. By the way, it is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. Thank you for joining anytime. I'm feeling like for the most part, this left side is done. It looks pretty good to me. Now we just need to go ahead and go up here and focus on this stone part. I thought it would be cool if we had two balconies on each side. Down below, we put a bunch of moss in. I think I'm going to do the classic pitcher plant and torch flower in between them. Using lecterns as a wall here. And then we should actually go in between all of them with some campfires. Load up some trap doors around that guy too. Sometimes you gotta pause all building because you realize there's one missing mushroom right here. And there you go, buddy. You're safe. Now we just need to make this middle part a little bit taller. We should probably make it about as tall as this side of the house up here. We probably got about 20 more blocks to go. Got most of this decorated here. We went up three different platforms here with awnings on every single level. I think we just need to add some doors to here. This is literally a one by three room that we're probably not going to use. This is just for show. Let's actually just cover those windows with shroom lights. So same as we do on the ground. I'm thinking some mushroom blocks are going to look good right below these campfires. I barely saw them, but how did the mushroom get all the way out there? What are you doing, dude? We are, you're pretty far from this build. All the way out here in the savannah. What's going on, dude? As I'm walking this guy back, I'm kind of realizing that this side over here is lacking a little bit of depth, so we might need to make some edits. Uh, let's probably add some campfires to these spruce trap doors right here. Ow. 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 Now with the mushrooms in here and most of the grass taken out, we actually just probably need to start getting the mycelium to take over. You know what? Let's actually make more of you guys real quick. Baby mushroom is on the way. There you go, buddy. What's going on? You want a piece of wheat? There you go. Looking pristine with the mycelium down this hallway. I was thinking we also get some of this mycelium outside, kind of creeping up towards the beach. 
I thought it was going to be a lot more gray when we put all this down, but the pink and purple colors are definitely showing. Buddy, while you're here, I'd like to take some soup. And you know what? Maybe I'll take another one. Thank you very much. Now to just get some mushrooms in the house here. We'll even get some of the brown mushroom blocks up there. Ooh, it'll be fun to even hang some from the ceiling. We landscaped everywhere, and now it's just flat, plain grass back here. We gotta bone meal it all up. Eventually, it'll be nice to actually connect this building up. I think the next closest one over here is the Donkey Sanctuary. If we go right over this transport system, there's a horse, there's a panda, there's the Donkey Sanctuary right here. So we could bring a path connecting these two buildings right here. Only about 100, 150 blocks maybe, so I don't think that would be that bad. This building is crazy. We do have a lightning rod all the way down there I'm pointing at. We need to bring another one over here because I think if these guys get hit by lightning, a mushroom gets into contact with the lightning strike, I think they turn into a brown mushroom. And I have never seen that before, so I would absolutely love to have that in the game. Also, I almost forgot to get the only other type of mushroom on the ground in here. I don't know how I did that. Dude, this is looking great. We got mushrooms everywhere. It'd be fun to see them grow. With that in mind, I was thinking it would actually be pretty fun if we had some mushrooms growing over here. If you want to plop up right next to this tree, we'll go up by six with the mushroom stem. We're going to use nine glowstone here and four other sides of nine red mushroom blocks. And before you know it, you got yourself a red mushroom. I added about 30 or 40 of these to the town a long time ago, and I haven't made them really since, but I forgot how much fun these are to make. Taking a step back here. Man, I love decorating for stuff like this. This is one of my favorite builds that is now in this world. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. Do a little cleanup job here. We seem to have uh, made a little bit of a mess. But yeah, guys, this episode was really fun to record. Thanks for coming to all the live streams as well. I do appreciate all the support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. Thanks to all the YouTube members and the Twitch subscribers. I really do appreciate y'all. Told you guys we were going to try to start making these builds bigger and better. And so I think this one's pretty big. We now have the biggest build on this part of the island. And now we finally have something that on the other side of the lush land bridge. This is absolutely perfect. Thank you guys again for watching. Take care of yourselves. Do something nice for somebody. I'll see you guys next time. Hi everybody, Waxfraud here, and welcome back to episode 47 of the Hardcore Minecraft Let's Play series. Right now, we are taking a look at the Mushroom Sanctuary that we built last episode. Thank you guys for watching if you did. Let's go over here and get a good look at these guys. Ooh, we got a baby one right here. Let's go. Hold on, buddy. Let's get away from the gate and go over here. Let's make a couple of these baby ones. And now we got baby mushrooms for days. There was one mushroom that we had taken out and we had set aside because we're going to turn him into a brown mushroom. This guy right here, he's trapped. He's in... <laughs> Sorry about it, bud, but uh, he's got to be pretty far away from society. We got four lightning rods right here. He is ready to get struck. We don't want you burning down this brand new house that we got here. Actually, I'm always seeing stuff that I could fix. Here's a long play that we had worked on and there's always something to add. Trap door here, trap door there. This is a cause for some lanterns on the end as well. Now let's go back home real quick. I'd like to explore some other options regarding turning that mushroom into a brown mushroom. During the time that we've spent building this entire city up, we have collected a few tridents, and so I think it's time we actually start using them. We can pull them out of here and into the anvil we go. We have a trident, and uh, we have a book that has Mending, Unbreaking 3, Channeling, Impaling 5, and Loyalty 3. This thing is going to cost 37 enchantment points. I think it's worth it, and we should make it 38 and call this thing Try Dude. And let's go. Well, that's a broken anvil. That was loud. We'll have to replace that guy real fast. We could have put Riptide 3 on it, but I'd rather just do channeling. Unfortunately, you can only do one or the other, and I'd rather do some controlled lightning strikes. Being able to swim through the water super fast and jump out is really, really cool, but honestly, the, the lightning strikes is where it's at. Now we need to just wait for it to start raining, and we'll let the fun begin. In the meantime, we actually do have a couple things that we could get done. There is the middle island over here that I had noticed was actually kind of empty, and all of the villagers were missing. I'm guessing they ran away, or they relocated themselves to another island, only to leave this horse here all by himself. I'm not sure why they would have done that. It's a cute horse. He deserves a family. So let's go over here and uh, let's get some villagers. Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to get in this boat here. Please get in the boat, sir. Thank you very much. Take your job away right here. Oh, that was not your composter. Is this your composter right here? Yep, that was it. Let's uh, put these back. Now that you're jobless, we can go out this way. Sir, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to come with me. Thank you very much. This guy right behind us is just following us. Sir, get away. Let's drop you off right here at the corner. We'll go bam right here. And I really hope that you don't run away. Come on, you can... F oh, buddy. No, 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 no. Let's get... This is this is not right. Come, yep, turn around. Let's go this way. You can find a job. Let's go this... Oh, no. Yeah. Let's go back and get a couple more. 
Let's see if we can drop this guy off right here as well. Sir, no, no, no. You're going in. And this guy, you know what? This guy knows how to follow directions. We got three villagers on this little island now. It's looking like a nice little family. We don't have anybody manning this watchtower right here, so let's see if we can push this guy on up. You're being a little difficult there, guy. You might be the most difficult villager that I've ever worked with. Let's get you on here. Let's go one, two, three, and... Whoa, no, what are you doing? You know what? Fine, just just go do whatever you want then. Maybe nobody was meant to be on this island, but uh, I really hope that nobody runs away from here. It'd be nice to have all these villagers just hang out here forever. Look at this guy. What? Where could you possibly be going? There's, there's nothing even over there. What? What are you doing? I don't mean to get totally distracted, but this guy right here, he just, you know what? What? Why? Why, why are you doing this? And he's about to cross the finish line. Here he goes. He's about to win, and he's blocked by the wall. He made it past the wall. He's going to keep going. There is nothing that can stop this guy. You know what? I was kind of annoyed with this guy at first, but honestly, now I'm just impressed. Maybe he's trying to make this sunken ship his home right here. This guy can't be up to any good. I think we you know what? Let's just leave him and see where he's at when we come back. Maybe he'll be like 5,000 blocks away. Who knows? You know, normally I do save the villagers that get caught in this little corner. I don't know how you guys keep doing it, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave you here for right now. I'm just going to leave you here to think about what you've done. If you get yourself in there, you know you can get yourself out. And that that's just life, buddy. That's just life. Santa, let's, uh, let's take a nap real quick. And I'd, I'd love to have a present, please. Absolutely no present from Santa. I don't know what I did to deserve this. Was it because I didn't give you a cake? Well, there you go, buddy. There you go. You can have as much cake as you want as long as you give me more rabbit's feet. Still waiting on the rain to come out. It seems like it doesn't want to... Oh, we have a cat. This guy is just pushing Santa. Dude, what are you doing to the cat? Come on, man. <laughs> the cat got pushed so far. It's another cat outside. We got to make it our friend. Oh, what's up, buddy? Take this. Take it. Yeah, we got another cat. While we're waiting for the rain, there's actually a lot of stuff that we can still get done. There's also some resources that we need to grab for today's build. I'm sure you could tell from the title of the episode, we are going to be building a polar bear sanctuary out in the ocean. We're going to have to go ahead and take some of this packed ice out, also some of the snow that's up top. Well, this is actually looking pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's plop a shulker box right down there. Let's take a shovel right here. Taking this snow out right here is great compared to this ice. As soon as we switch over to the pickaxe, it gets... Oh my god, that is so loud. When we're getting the packed ice on the Twitch streams for the nether highways to turn into blue ice, I'll turn the volume down almost like 10% because, dude, it is... It's extremely loud. Why can't everything just be like this snow right here? Looks like we got a mama bear and a little cub down here. What's going on, guys? About to have a sanctuary going for you. I wonder... I, actually, I thought... Okay, I was going to say, I thought the polar bear was going to be aggressive as soon as I walked over. And it looks like it still is being aggressive. And Okay, all right. Oh, my God. The, the, the little baby polar bear is so cute, dude. I wish they weren't so aggressive when they get older. Let's just uh, keep our distance a little bit. We'll just get a bed right over here. Looks like we got a big lava pool over here. Honestly, I could use the obsidian, so let's go ahead and just take all this out. I can still hear some lava down there, so yep, there it is. Let's uh, let's just keep the water right on top until we don't see any more. I find it funny how it's always raining when I'm trying to record, and then when I'm actually waiting for it to rain, it, it stops raining. Kind of funny how the world works sometimes. Collected a bunch of the snow blocks, but we don't have much of the snow itself, and this is going to be nice for layering, so we have to grab some of this. Just destroying the landscape here, making it look awful. Still hasn't started raining, so let's go show you guys what we have built since the last episode. Here's that closest spruce village that we have that we went to in episode 1, and we still need to get this thing hooked up with a pathway over the ocean. Hook it up to this island. We can probably start building on this island too, because we are going to be running out of space in a couple of episodes. Very quickly approaching the edge. We have, Oh my god, there's so many cows. We only have room for like maybe four or five builds over in this area. But let's fly over the city. I wanted to show you guys these builds in chronological order. So first things first, we're going to hit up this incomplete nether portal right here. Then we're hopping in a boat so that we can go all the way to the door that connects up to the Mushroom Island. And welcome to a hardcore player's paradise. We got the mushrooms over here. We got the mushrooms back here. Oh, it's raining. Hold up. Okay, it's raining. This is great. I wanted to show you guys this build, but we don't have much time because it's raining. This is where we're going to be connecting up the nether portal. Oh, it's an actual thunderstorm too. Okay, hold on. We don't even have to use the trident. That's crazy. Let's head back as quickly as we can. It's going to take us a while to fly, so we're going to use the boat. Let's turn around. Let's go. We got to get out of here. All right, the thunderstorm is a Bruin. I'm just going to go right here. Oh, no way. He already turned into a brown mushroom. Let's go. 
Well, I mean, we do have a trident. Let's see. Can we do this? Oh my god, that's crazy. Did this guy just turn back into a red mushroom? That's crazy. All right, well, this is now my new favorite weapon in the game. Got loyalty on this thing, too, so it always comes back. Hey, you over there, what are you doing? Now, word on the street is if you take a trident to a creeper, it becomes supercharged. So let's take a look here. Okay, now that's a supercharged creeper, and now it's coming after us. If there's one thing that could end the hardcore world, it'd probably be a supercharged creeper. Oh my god, we have another guy over here throwing tridents at me. Come on now, guy. Let's get this guy out of the equation. Now, I kind of want to get a mob head, maybe two. Let's try to get some zombie mob heads. We have a totem in hand, so if this thing explodes and kills us, we're good to go. We also put our blast protection back on. Let's see. Is he going to explode? Come on, creeper. Is he going to explode? Oh, God, he exploded. Yo, we have a mob head. Okay, hold on. Let's see here. Bam. We have a zombie head. Can we put this on? We totally can. Let's go, dude. These tridents are no joke, they really do the damage. This thing went from red to brown, back to red, all the way back to brown. This is awesome. Let's get you free and follow me with the wheat here, buddy. We should have had this done last episode, but you know what? Better late than never. This is amazing. And you know what? We can go bam, and we can go bam, and we can make a baby mushroom. And just like that, we have a baby brown mushroom. Let's go! On our way back home to show you guys the long play builds, but I do want to get this zombie head in the starter house somewhere. Let's see if we can put it up on the wall. I think actually what I'll do is take this fern out and I'm going to slap it right up on the desk like that. Now when I walk in the house and turn the corner, that thing is staring right at me. For a second, I thought there was only one of these guys up here. There used to be three regular villagers. I only see two. One got replaced by a jungle villager. Which one of you guys is the murderer? It's probably this guy right here. Hey, you guys are getting way too close. You know, I think you're getting just a little, a little too close. Oh, how'd you? Oh, see you later, buddy. What goes around comes around. All right, let's go right past the pumpkin and melon farm, right past the spiral staircase and into the newest long play build. We have the underground coal mine right here. So this build was wild, super fun to build. Okay, we have some unexpected guests. He looks like he got himself in a cart, kind of like this guy down here. Uh-oh, even some villagers are starting to fall down here. That's not good. You put some job blocks. Okay, this is, we have some zombies pretty much everywhere. Get out of here, guy. What are you doing? Hey, you're scaring my villager guy. You, you got to get out of here. You got yourself down here, dude. I don't really know how to get you back up other than maybe making a little staircase out of some stone that we gather. We'll get one right here. Let's see, can you hop yourself up like this? Buddy, I don't know if you know, but there's a perfect path to jump right back into civilization. Do you need me to move this cluster right here? Let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. Maybe that'll help. I was about to give up hope on this guy. Let's go. He seems to have made his way back up. All right, perfect, dude. Good job. Put this back in here. We have that extra fern. Let's just place this down here for some decoration. We have a staircase going all the way down. It's somewhat of a staircase. It's just all made out of stone. And these are the permanent endermen up there. I'm not going to make the mistake of looking at them, but they have been there for hours. They have never left. You can even look in the long play video. They were there the whole time. Yeah, this place is wild. Let's actually fly up here. Bad idea. Ouch, bad idea. And with all of these glowberries getting extra long, it's starting to look overgrown, and I am absolutely loving it. Let's actually say what's up to our new friend. I don't think he's going to be able to stay here permanently. He might despawn. Let's give him some andesite. Can you pick that up? There we go, dude. We have this guy, and now we have our friend up here. This is perfect. The next build I wanted to show you guys was a long play that we did the other day. It was a cozy villager house on the beach on the complete other side of town over here. Fly around the potion brewing tower real quick and we'll get a good look at it from the west side. Coming down from the dock real quick. Actually, wait, we have some villagers that are stuck in some boats. Let's get you guys out. We have a baby villager stuck in a boat. Hold up a second. Let's get you out. Let's get you out, dude. Let's get you guys on the docks. Get up there, dude. Get up there. Okay, you guys were way easier than the guys from earlier. All right, I think you guys are going to love it on this side of the island. And this is the brand new house. Let's actually go over here. Bam! Hop in a boat real quick so that we can get a good look at it from over here. And this is actually one of my new favorite little starter house designs that we have in this world. I wanted to give the villagers over here a bunch of beds with the house with a bunch of workbenches so that a bunch of jobs can be taken. And this guy's loving the new house. But this is it. We have the front side of the house that leads over to the back side with the ocean right here. You can't really see out the windows. 
I have too much cake in the way, so we can go over here. And this is like our little ocean view, and this is the villager house. And thank you guys for watching the long play videos. I appreciate you guys letting me get my build fixes in. And what do you know? It's starting to rain just as we're starting to find a spot where we want to get this polar bear sanctuary. Obviously, it is going to be in the ocean, and I think we're going to replicate a little bit of an iceberg. Maybe next to this tree farm over here. We haven't built anything in the ocean over here in a while. Next to the starter house area over here would be pretty cool, although I do want to do something with this sunken ship right here, so maybe staying above this area is not a good idea. Honestly, we could just move a little bit to the right. There's this whole area that's unused, and I think we should just use it. My guy is just still going for it slowly but surely. Dude, what are you doing? What could possibly have gone wrong in your life that made you want to go all the way out here? At this point, I'm just extremely impressed. You're way past the frog sanctuary, so I'm, I'm gonna let you do it. You just do whatever you gotta do. I know you got something to prove, buddy. You just, you prove it. You go out there and prove it. Swimming out in the middle of nowhere. I feel like we're pretty far away from that ship. We're kind of far away from the tree farm. We got our own little space out here. I think we should just go down, build up with this packed ice, and uh, let's get to building. I think what I'm gonna do is just continue sliding around here until we have a big circle. So I want this thing to be big enough to have a bunch of natural ice structures, kind of like this right here. We have some ice clusters just growing up like that. Kind of like how the mossy cobblestone does in the taiga. Also, I would like to have enough room on here for an igloo. I think it'd be cool if we did an igloo. We're going to make some custom ice spikes here as well. They end up turning out to be pretty cool. You just kind of have to stare yourself up. You'll just randomize the sides here and it ends up not looking too bad. We just got to keep making this wall wider and keep building it up so it gets a lot thicker. Basically just making our own custom ice mountain right here. Yeah, this is getting enormous. We have ourselves an iceberg down here. We just got to keep kind of randomizing the backside here. So I'm just going to keep on jumping up. Then I was trying to get a little drooping effect right here with some of the ice kind of going down this way. Build up the sides just a little bit. I want this cave to be nice and cozy for these polar bears. This thing is not looking too bad. We spent a couple hours on a stream building this half a dome, and I like this a lot. I got this under area here for the polar bears, and there's even an upstairs. Gonna have to hop your way up here. We had to put lanterns pretty much everywhere because it's turned into a mob farm. There was creepers and skeletons spawning all over the place. This is my first time making an abstract iceberg out in the ocean here, and I'm loving this. I kind of want to do more projects like this. Started adding snow blocks in on top of the ice to give it a little bit of snowy texture. Now this right here is looking a little bit more detailed. The one thing that is bothering me though is the underside. It's not really looking like an iceberg. It's just kind of a frozen ice sheet that's floating. We are going to bring this down by about five or six layers. Sir, there are no visitors allowed. You're going to have to be gone. Can't believe we almost did this without a conduit. Let's get... Buddy, I thought I kicked you out. Get out of here. Conduits always look crazy, especially with the shaders. This thing is looking magnificent right now. Now we can see more clear, it's more bright under the ocean, and we can just breathe forever. Making working under the iceberg a lot easier. I also just happened to notice this guy, I think he's coming back a little bit. Okay, actually, never mind. This is an entirely different villager. This over here is the original villager. He is all the way out here. My guy, what could possibly be out here? We haven't had this issue since, like, episode 20. Why are you doing this all over again? Like I said earlier, I'm impressed, so I'm, I'm just gonna see how far you can go. Got the moon rising in through the tree farm right here. We also have this guy right here who's just making his way back home. I'm thinking that moving them back to this island was something that they did not want. There's only one fisherman here and the one horse. I, I don't know what it is about this island, but they do not want to stay here. Two of the guys are all the way out there, and one of the guys actually already made his way all the way back home. This iceberg is fitting right in behind the tree farm over here. I kind of wanted to fly over because, oh, is he come, Is he making his way back? Nice. He wants to come see if the polar bear sanctuary is going to be suited for him as well. I wanted to see if these spruce slabs would make for good stairs up the ice. I know I wanted to keep it a little bit more natural looking with just the ice and some snow in here. But I'm thinking that some spruce wood in here might make the colors pop a little more. We have a nice dock here so that we bring the polar bears over. There's a nice official spot to land. I also wanted to cure some of the lighting issue over here by putting in a small diorite statue with an end rod. I figured these would kind of look like natural rocks poking out of the ice. The ceiling was looking a bit dark, so I wanted to add some chains hanging here and put some end rods at the bottom here. I mean, the ceiling lit up here makes it seem just a little bit more magical. Now this full staircase area is not looking too bad. I would like to start adding some color to this build. We could start adding some amethyst in here. Let's go find some clusters at the nearest geode. I haven't gone for these in a very long time and wow, okay, yeah, these are all completely full. We need to start taking these out. About 10 minutes to take all these out and we should have a couple of stacks. 
We still need to set up an auto amethyst farm. That would be very nice. Like I always say, there are too many things to do in this world, man. Just too many things to do. Let's fly back. This thing is looking beautiful right now. I think the amethyst is going to look fantastic. Let's kind of just start spreading these around the edges. Load them up over the cave entrance as well. And we actually were able to make this cave because we had the iceberg effect going down below the water. So now we have a nice little wonderland of a cave down here. Just got to add some amethyst to the ceiling and to the floor and to the walls. The ice is already so reflective and the amethyst is as well. And it's just shining so bright down here. And somehow this thing is still not completely spawn proof because we got zombies coming out of nowhere. Got some amethyst geodes up on the top overhang up here. And now I'm looking at these diorite rocks from up here and I'm thinking we should add a little bit of green to them. So I do have some flower pots with some ferns that we should add all the way around. This should add some much needed color to this build. And it looks like this guy out here has got some second thoughts. He's starting to make his way back the other direction. Think we ended up mob proofing the cave up top and down below and we have it decorated with a little bit of green a little bit of purple in here now I think it's about time we move in these polar bears Let's fly out to those ice spikes and see if we can get them to come back with us. I can feel it getting colder I see the ice It would be very fun to be able to breed these guys because then we would only have to take two of them back home Instead of taking four or five of them right now to be able to make a full house but unfortunately, that's just the way the game is. So I think we're going to slap a lead on this guy. Ice path going for this guy. Come on now. Let's go, buddy. Sometimes it feels like the polar bears can go faster than you even when you're in a boat. These guys are straight up just sprinting on top of the water. We've got a dolphin that joined us too. I actually forget how long these journeys are when you don't have a lightroom, man. This takes a while. A couple thousand blocks seems a lot longer when you don't have any rockets. And this polar bear is having the time of his life. He's just swinging back and forth. There's a stray LA all the way out here in the ocean. Dude, I, I've saved so many LAs out here. How, how do you guys keep... And there's another one. How do you guys keep coming out here? Okay, since there's two of you, I will put you on a lead. Let's go back and get your buddy too. Now we have Dolphin's Grace going way too fast. Okay, buddy, you're a little too high up there. Can you get down here, please? Just a little lower, buddy. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we have two LAs and a polar bear. Is that a third LA up here? Oh my god. Okay, so now we have three LAs and a polar bear and a nice sunset. Let's get back to our boat real fast before the drown starts spawning out here. Let's go home, dude. Hey, what's up, guy that doesn't want to live at the island? Meet the new polar bear that does want to live at the island. This polar bear is so excited, he's trying to swing all the way around me, and bada bing, bada boom, we are home, buddy. Of course, one of the LAs gets in the boat. Let's see if we can break this down. Here we go. Let's get everybody up onto the island. Okay, let's tie the three LAs up to here for now, and let's get the other lead that's in the water. And I'm actually going to take this guy down into the cave. Now I'm going to get some more polar bears from that biome back there. And you just make yourself at home down here, buddy. I think about four or five more polar bears should just about do it. Let's see how taking four of these guys at a time turns out. One at a time might have been a little better. These guys seem to just swing around a lot and go right in front of you the whole time. You guys are making it very difficult to get there quickly. Come on now, please guys, come on. We are slowly but surely going to make it to the shore. Okay, let's take the boat back and let's bring these guys all the way as far back as we can. Now, these polar bears do have quite a bit of space in here and there are quite a bit of them, but I wanted to give them a little bit more space. So we're just going to go right through the back on this other side here. With more packed ice, we made an overhang in the back to just create a little bit more space so these guys can crawl around. Take enough out and we have ourselves a nice little gateway here. It looks like I lost one of these here. What's going on, guys? How you doing? really do hope they are enjoying their home. There's a couple more things I did want to do, so I want to take out some of the packed ice for some texturing because we can put blue ice in here, plop some out of the floor here. Still kind of crazy to me that we had mentioned making a polar bear sanctuary in episode one, and it is episode 47, and we are just getting to it right now. Just shows you how many things there are to do in this game, just endless builds to be made. I was just thinking about the polar bears and how they look. It's kind of hard to differentiate between any of these guys. They all have the exact same look, at least with the llamas, we can throw colors on them. It's been a while since we said hello to the llamas. Let's fly over here real fast, because it'd be cool if the polar bears had something like this right here. We have a light blue on Buddy right here. Pal's got some purple. We got Mate dressed up in yellow. Friends in blue, and we got Guy over here in the lime green. I mean, I wish the polar bears could do that. Now I'm going to start going around the perimeter and getting some sea pickles up in here so we can get this a little bit lit up on the sides. I don't want to just rely on the end rods and the diorite for all the lighting on the floor. We can get the perimeter at least set up. Hey, get back on the island, buddy. What are you doing? Now, I really do like the way this thing looks, but I think if we get some icebergs, maybe 10 or 12 of them around the sides here, I think that's going to make this build pop a lot more. Probably make them all around this size, and we can pop some snow blocks up in here, too. Break this all off. We're good to go. It's fun to see these guys enjoying the backside of this area now. 
Icebergs looking decent so far. We just gotta keep stacking them up and breaking them off. Wow, I'm loving the way this thing turned out, man. A little dock that takes you up in here too. And oh, actually, hold up. I didn't even complete this. Get some stairs right here and some stairs right here. And voila, we have our nice little dock. Actually, I'm gonna get a little bit of extra ice just covering the wood here to make it seem like the wood's just kind of more structurally sound. And might as well get some spruce trap doors here to make this look a little bit more detailed. Hey, what are you doing? Get tri duded buddy. And that right here is looking a lot better. I feel like this guy could be added to the world. He just hopped right into the boat. Let's go ahead and take him back to the island. Put him right next to the dock. Maybe he'd like to become a fisherman. Let's just plop you right here, sir. You're not going to be afraid of polar bears, are you? Let's just go right here. Get you up here. And he seems... Oh, did he? does he want to run away? No, he just wants to be a fisherman. I can tell you guys are going to be best friends. Kind of funny that it rains here and it doesn't snow. It usually should be snowing here during this type of weather. Forgot to get one little end rod here in the new gate. I think this might be my new favorite build in the game. We have a new home for the polar bears. This is awesome. They have their own upstairs balcony with a little mezzanine down there. And everything seems to be lit up so there's not going to be any mobs over here. Except for these allays, of course. I think I'm just going to leave them here because I don't know why, but they, they wanted to escape so they, they can just hang out with the polar bears. This guy, too. He can be the zookeeper fishing for everything that these guys need to eat. Would you guys like to see an achievement that I did not know that you could get? Well, uh, if you just look at a parrot like this and uh, like that, then you just get an achievement. We're going to see ourselves out of there and uh, let's go on some adventures today. Looks like we got some runaway pandas. Looks like I got to take you guys home. I was coming back from a trip in the end over there, and these guys are at least 20 chunks away. Like, wh why? By the way, guys, welcome to episode 48. Thank you for watching. We're gonna hook you both up here, and we're gonna just, we're taking you guys back home. This is, this is a mess. What brings you guys out here? Why would you come all the way out this far? You guys absolutely do not need to be out there. All right, let's let you loose here. Let's let you loose here. There you buddies go. Let's, let's take this boat out with the shears. Come on, get on there. There you go. Hang out with all the other guys. By the way, thanks for watching the last episode, if you did. We built this polar bear sanctuary right here. We got a cave underside. We can pop around the back to where the stairs are that take you up to a little mezzanine and then takes you up to the balcony. And like I mentioned last episode, I love doing these custom natural landscapes, so I do plan on doing a lot more of these. You two escapees, I'm going to name Pat and then also Pam. I don't know why, but Pat and Pam, that seems like the, uh, the, the right kind of names for you guys. You know what I'm thinking? Since we are saving the polar bears, let's go save those bees and allays that were stranded out in the ocean. If I remember correctly, they're going to be a little bit past the brewing tower. In the middle of nowhere, we see the allay. Buddy, I'm going to hop in the boat, and uh, you're going to have to fly down to me. I feel like it's so easy to end up glitching in these boats. I don't know about you guys, but do you ever feel like that? Like, I feel like I'm just straight up vibrating in this boat right now. Come on, buddy. I know I'm a stranger in the rain, but you got to come down and get on the lead. There's another one down there. All right, buddy. I got. I see your friend. Come on. Come on down. And of course, it's night. Let's uh, let's take a sleep nap down in the bottom of the ocean. Yes, I'm a lot friendlier now that it's not raining. Let's go this way. Let's get your buddy. Hey, dude. Sorry about it, but you are coming with me. I believe this is the third and final allay. Let's take you back to the allay sanctuary. Okay, someone's definitely setting the allays loose here because we have a fourth and a fifth one out here. And now we have five allays on us. I must have done something wrong here. Coming down the back side of the city here. Well, you two can just chill in the boat then. And you guys can just get back into the LA Sanctuary for now. Someone tell me why I just spent five minutes out here searching for the bees in a grid. Unfortunately, I think all the ocean bees are gone. But actually, if I remember right, there is a cow over here that needed saving. We have Lava Cow down here who's kind of given himself a terrible fate. It's pretty much just as easy as kind of giving him one block out. All you gotta do is walk out, sir. There you go. And since this is hardcore, let's just take all this out. And all this obsidian can get right into my belly. Nom 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 nom. Look at him living his best life. This is awesome. All right, so I do want to show you guys what inspired today's episode, which is the hot air balloon. I'm sure you can see that from the title of the episode. But we now have airplanes in this world. We had built them in the newest long play that came out on the channel. And thank you guys for watching if you did. So we have multiple colors here. We're going to land on the purple one here. We have purple wool mixed with purple terracotta. And each of them has a handy dandy stone cutter for the wheel there. But there's just enough space in here to fly. People have been asking for a while to get some objects in the sky. And uh, we are finally here. We have a plane. Well, actually, we have five planes. And uh, we have an AFK platform up here that I was hoping to turn into that hot air balloon. 
We have spent a lot of time up here getting the iron from the iron farm down there and the gunpowder farm right below us. But if you guys remember right, this is just a basic little bedroom that I'm hoping we can turn into an extravagant hot air balloon, making this a much more desirable AFK platform. And it'll be nice to have the city on the ground to look at, as well as all of these new planes in the sky. Ooh, there's actually one thing that I wanted to show you guys real quick before we start the build. Actually, on a YouTube stream, we had built a brand new amethyst farm on the mossy path. If we take a right instead of going straight over to island number two, we can go down to the brand new amethyst farm. We have a little dock over here if we just want to take it over by boat. You can also just walk instead and then head right down here. Now this is crazy, I love this area. It's a very bright farm. We used a lot of glowstone covered up with the magenta glass on the corners and then each color of the frog lights going into the center. <laughs> kind of looks like a disco in here. This thing is nuts. Since we have a conduit right next to us, we never have to go up for air and all of these will float right to the top since we have water source blocks. Didn't really want to mess with any of the redstone with doing this because I, I also don't really mind taking it out myself. Now, I do accidentally break them sometimes, but uh, I guess I'll just try to be as careful as possible. And I don't know about you guys, but every time I'm excavating a trail ruins, I end up breaking like four, maybe five of the suspicious gravel. I don't mean to do it, but uh, it just happens. But I am going to try to be as careful as possible with this one. Being down in the waters got me thinking about the trident, and it's also got me thinking about some thunderstorms. Luckily, we have ourselves a thunderstorm right here, right now. Let's go back to the charged creeper station. Looks like we have multiple zombies now with maybe... Oh, I actually don't want to do multiple charged creepers. That's probably not a great idea. All right, we got multiple creepers. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Let's... Oh, God. We used a totem. Let's get out of here. The... Okay, hold up. Jeez. Let's not do that again, dude. Let's equip this right here. What did we just get? Uh, did we just get a music disc? I was not expecting to pop a totem right there. We should probably have a couple of skulls here at least. Be gone! Tell me we at least got one. Okay, we got a zombie head. Let's go. Get out of here! Not looking too bad. I got an arrow going through my cheek, but you know, it's working. Now we have a zombie head for decoration upstairs, and if you go downstairs, we put a wither skeleton right here, and we have our first zombie head still right here. We gotta keep collecting those. And I know I said I wouldn't, but we are in the saving mood, so there you go, buddy. Also, why are there so many iron golems? We have one, not just one, actually. There are two iron golems up in my house. I'm just gonna shoot this guy. Let's get out of here. Okay, a dog is here now. Let's actually just shoot both of these guys. Oh, no, the puppy! Buddy, get over here and sit down. There you go. I don't know if these iron golems can see me at all. Let's just, uh, let's just keep shooting them. Whoa, buddy, don't come near me. Get out of here, dude. Get out of my house. You too, dude. What are you doing down there? Okay, actually, you know what? I just realized you can accidentally shoot the items off of an item frame with an arrow. That is something I did not know, and I just did it twice. You know what I'm thinking? We gotta get the rest of these iron golems out of town real quick. Let's, uh, let's stroll through the night, and uh, let's take these guys out. Because now I'm thinking, I actually have a trading hall over here. It's the fisherman's trading hall. Get out of here, buddy. It's the fisherman's trading hall that I was going to upgrade. I had worked on this on stream. It's just a small little basement. I need to actually bring a zombie through here and get these guys zombified. And what better time to do it than right after an iron golem killing spree. Let's go down into the underground library real fast. We can get the zombie that we used to zombify all these guys, because I don't think we'll do that anymore. Okay, looks like he's actually just ready to go. Let's, uh, all right, follow me, buddy. Just a little bit further. We're going to go right through this door. Stuck on the trap door. No problem. Let's, ouch. Let's go this way. Do your little hops over the hurdles, I guess. Come on, buddy. This is not the Olympics. Let's go this way. I hope I got all the iron golems around here. Well, I'm actually going to have to kill my snow golems real quick because they tried to do the defense. And unfortunately, I can't have that happen. We have to go this way. Um, okay, this is bad. The, uh, the sun is about to come up and the zombie is not even close. Okay, the zombie is on fire. Buddy, you got to go a little bit faster. Oh man, he's definitely not gonna make it. Oh no. So can you tell me exactly how you got up here on this lantern outside? Let's go back inside and you need to get up on that cake. There you go, buddy. Sit right there. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't belong on this cake. Well, since that zombie died, let's go ahead and just start the main build sooner than I thought. Next time the night rolls around, we can, you know, just give it another go. We do have another zombie saved. Let's go ahead and fly up there. I'm actually going to link in the tutorial that I watched for this. There's a design that I saw that I actually really liked, and it's by a creator named Tridar. 
We've got ourselves a nice dirt square here. We're going to start off with a slab in the middle and go out with four spruce trap doors. We're going to follow this tutorial to a T with a couple different variations of the wood. We'll get the deep slate tile walls in the corner there and we'll get the deep slate brick stairs going up like so. Also, I'm going to be stripping most of the logs you see today. We got a wood and a deep slate orb that's forming here. And in the tutorial, they use a glowstone, but I'm going to use a yellow frog light because I'm crazy. We're going to double up on some spruce trapdoor walls over here on the corners. All right, probably should have lit up this platform a bit. We got some mobs that are starting to spawn, sir. You're going to have to get yeeted out of here. Thank you. Bye. Now that spider actually just reminded me that we are actually out of string, I think. Well, let's actually go back home, place the last stair here. Let's go back home real fast. I want to see because we might have to go to the spider farm. This horse is going crazy, man. He heard that we do not have any string. Uh, buddy, it's going to be okay, man. It's going to be okay. And moment of truth. Okay, we are completely out. Oh my god. I thought we were going to maybe like have a little bit less than one stack, but no, we are just 100% out. This guy's still spinning, man. Are you okay? You're gonna, dude. You are. You're gonna be. You're gonna get sick, dude. All right, all right, man. You just, you just keep being yourself. Been a while since we stopped over at the spider farm. We're gonna perch right down here and let's close that. There goes a rocket. Still wasting about a stack of rockets on average every day. Let's, uh, let's get some spiders. Get out of here, guys. Get. Oh, whoa. What's happening? Got a skeleton in here. Get out of here, buddy. Get out of there. Hey, get out of here, buddy. Boom. While we're down here, we're just going to make some tripwire hooks real quick. This build uses quite a few of them. And we'll complete the first little part by putting an oak trap door down in there. Now we got to get some deep slate tile walls on each of the corners, followed by some fences on top, followed by the hopper in the middle. I've never used a redstone lamp in this world, but I'm pretty excited to have one here now because uh, it's always fun to use new blocks. We'll get one going here when we eventually make a lighthouse, though. Let's go up one, and we will get the pistons on four sides here. Oh, that's the wrong way. Let's go down. Maybe it's better from the side here. There we go. All right, looking good. Almost forgot to slap those tripwire hooks down here. Start covering up some of these frog lights with some spruce trap doors and some slabs here. Been using a lot of crazy woods like the cherry wood and the mangrove wood lately on this series, and it's nice to go back and use spruce every once in a while. Except I do want to put some oak fence out here. I think the contrast between oak and spruce might work right there. Not too bad. I love the lanterns that they have hanging off the side here. These will eventually connect up with some chains. We'll get some tripwire hooks on the side of this as well. And now we finally have something to use all these stone buttons on. I think it's actually going to look pretty good. Mostly deep slate and spruce, but with a little bit of stone, I think it's going to make the colors pop. And now we get to throw the almighty campfire in there. Let's get this little part of this lantern done right here. And you know what? It's nighttime, which means I think we should get back to our original distraction and go get another zombie real quick. But this time, we're not going to mess it up. We're going to get the zombie safely over to the fisherman's trading hall. We have zombie number two trapped in a little hallway down here. Let's, uh, let's let you loose. All right, follow me down here. Around the corner we go. Let's keep going here. Past all of the librarians. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Completely forgot to clear out the iron golems before we started this. This is not good. Let's uh, let's take you out. Let's get this back here. We gotta get... Come on. I think the coast is clear. We're gonna make it. Unless there's an iron golem that happens to spawn right now, right next to us. I think we're gonna be okay. This guy's dipping. See ya, dude. These guys are just terrified of... Oh, see ya. <laughs> He's spinning. He has no idea what's going on. All right, we've officially made it farther than the last zombie. You're doing great, buddy. Let's go down here for a moment. Follow me. You have reached the feast, buddy. You can have yourself a meal. I'm gonna hide up here. I don't think the zombie can climb ladders. Let's actually just go right up top. The zombie does not see me anymore. Oh, that guy. This guy wanted the zombie so bad. He is bitter. Oh, man. I can just hear him getting smacked around down there. Oh, no. Oh, that's a zombie. And dude, we have turtles all... You know what? We got... Since we're in the saving mood today, let's get these turtles back into the ocean. Let's save some sea turtles. See ya, buddy. We even have some turtles stuck underside. God, come on, guys. Let's get... Yeah, there you go, buddy. See ya. By the end of this video, we will have saved every mob. By the way, if there's any mobs that you guys have seen that need saving, let me know. Because this world is getting huge, and it's getting hard to keep track of all the mob sanctuaries. Luckily, Twitch chat is there to help out a lot, though. You guys definitely remind me of a lot of things that need to get done, or stuff that I just forgot. It's been a couple minutes, and I don't hear any smacking anymore, so let's go down. Where's that? What's up, zombie? Get out of here. Get away! And we'll collect more zombies to get more zombification going, but I think these guys only needed it once, because I really only want them for the campfires to go down to one emerald. And it seemed to have worked. We have the campfires at the one-for-one one trades now. Let's go, buddies. 
I forgot to put the stair up here. So, all right, dude, you're going to have to just stop. Let's put that. There you go. All right, now you're closed in. You too, buddy. Stop trying to hop out. Come on. There you go. Got that open. Now we can trade for the campfires. Perfect. Now the fisherman trading hall's done. We got minimal decoration down here, but we did use some note blocks for the floor, which we never do. This is kind of fun. Kind of checkerboarded it with some hay bales down here. I kind of like that. Okay, distraction over with. This will be the last distraction of the day. Let's fly back to the hot air balloon and get this thing finished. Not looking too bad so far, and we're almost at the AFK platform. Now we can get to the fun part. I think I'm going to actually start adding a little bit of the lime green wool in here. Next level going here. And the next level. And on to the next level. We'll get some spruce that's going to cover the outside of the lime green wool. Starting to have a nice hole going all the way down to the campfire. This thing is huge, and it's also a nice tutorial to follow. Nice and easy. I'm not very good at tutorials. That's why I don't really make that many of them, but uh, the one that we're following is pretty nice. We're making a giant hole right now, and we're getting very close to the AFK platform. Next, we're going to work in the other color, and I decided to use magenta here. I was just trying to think of like which colors are going to be the coolest to look up at the sky and I've, for some reason just the magenta wool and the lime wool they just those are the ones that popped in my head next we're just going to have some hidden frog lights on the sides so we'll cover it up with some trap doors like so can't be forgetting the buttons here these have to go on every single block that they can imaginably go on we can drop down to those hanging lanterns here and let's actually build up with the oak fence and then lastly we will put a, an oak log that'll go right there and we'll strip it. We'll have to fix this here. Let's bring these oak fences back down. Now we have to start filling in this next layer with some of the wool. We're slowly swallowing this AFK platform up. We're almost at face level. And now we actually are level with the AFK platform, finally getting some slabbage out to the side. We need to get this lit up just a wee bit more. We do not want anything spawning up here. If a creeper spawns up here, that would be the absolute worst thing to happen right now. Well, it's almost getting to the point where this hot air balloon is getting a little bit wider than the dirt platform that I made up here. It's going to render this scaffolding a little bit useless in a moment. And of course, the recording gods have blessed us with rain once more. It is always raining when we're trying to record. We need to make more of those hanging lights, so we're going to bring some oak wood down. Slap even more tripwire hooks down here. Now we got to bring even more oak fence all the way around. Let's jump over here, and that should be it for this level. Never mind, we're always missing a couple. And a couple more. This thing's starting to take some shape here. I wanted to actually just take a step back and get a quick look, but uh, let's keep on moving with this wool. We got one, two, three, one, two, one, and two. And the green wool again. We got one, two, three, four, five, and then one with the two, and back to one. Now we're covering up a frog light all the way up here. Get a spruce trap door on top of that, too. This thing is getting enormous. And of course, it's raining again. It's always raining. All I want to do is get this magenta wool down, but uh, it's just it's just always raining. Now it's time to run around the circle and slab it all up. So I don't think it's going to get any wider than this really right here. I believe we can start to bring these logs out for the belt on the middle of this hot air balloon. Put another ochre frog light right there. Strip that. And plug these up with some spruce trap doors. Belt's not looking too bad. We've got to get some stained glass in this little square where this frog light is. Or we can just use ourselves as some decoration. Crazy how tall we are up here now. This is officially the building that is at the tallest height. It's not like the tallest building because we did start up pretty high, but it is at the tallest height. Time to start covering this guy up. Two, three. I think that's it for the lime green on us right now. It is. We need to go down and get some more from the sheep shearing wool farm real quick. That's kind of a scary jump, but uh, let's see what we got going on down here. And hold up. What are? Oh my god, the dispensers are out. We got to replace these shears. Go around another iron golem that somehow just keeps on spawning in the house. Let's get some iron, take it back. Let's start loading up the shears. I'm willing to bet that all of these are going to need some shears here. So we got the lime green filled up. Yep, yellow too. Oh my god, all of these are empty. We got to fix them all. I haven't been doing Rainbow Mountain in so long that I just haven't been paying attention to these. But we will get this hot air balloon done. Almost at cloud height right now. This is not looking too bad. This top part coming together is making everything look so nice. Gotta get the wood in here. There's some spots that I accidentally put some wool in. It's gonna make it look a little weird, but it's gonna be an easy fix for the most part. We'll have some more magenta wool down. Ooh, it's starting to get dark down in here. All right, let's plug the magenta up. Let's plug the lime up. We are good to go. This is now a completed hot air balloon, except for the interior. We can look down into this hole. I think we're gonna use this as a means of getting in and out. Because we do have the basket down here, but I don't really want to go up through the basket. I think this is just going to be a nice little place to chill. There are a couple things on this basket I'm trying to fix, though. 
place the bottom with a hopper and get a light up there. Get some on the corners here. It's looking lit already, looking way better. Let me take a look from back here. Okay, nice. Yeah, it used to be a lot darker. Now we can at least see here. There's probably a bunch of places where I forgot to put the stone buttons. Yep, already found two more. And another one. And another one. Get the last of the stones up here. That should be A-OK. -okay. Maybe we'll go up here as well. I actually kind of like the stones over here. But uh, we ended up with the whole ride kind of at where we used to AFK right down here. We'll fall. Luckily, no mobs in here right now. But this is a nice creepy little ball that we made. Now I was thinking, what if we turn this thing into a lush cave? I kind of want to plug this up right here. We're going to start slowly filling this in with some water. Set up a temporary ladder system so that we can get up and down here. The hole at the top is starting to look like the light at the end of the tunnel. Going out the top here, and ah, look at those planes. Okay, went back to get some supplies, and we now have friends down here. We got creepers, skeleton, we have everything. Get out of here, zombie, please be gone. While I'm laying down the dirt layer, I'm going to just get some glow berries around here. That's what I'm probably going to use for the main source of lighting on the part that's not underwater. Get these in every single crevice possible. For the most part, all of the glowberries are in place. We might add a couple more of them, but we do have a lot of them. Got a bunch of water source blocks here with the dirt. Now we can start working on taking it out here. Gonna let all the water float down, and we'll probably have to use some kelp, kind of like how we did with the amethyst farm. If we want to get some sea pickles down there, they're all gonna have to be some water source blocks themselves. Now we just need to add some water to the underside over here. Let's keep getting that done. First things first, we gotta get some fish down here. Let's go, buddies. You can now call this your home. We expanded the AFK farm so we can actually go in here and we can chill for a little bit. I have some decorations hanging out in the ender chest. Let's pull a couple of these out and see what we can do. There we go. Not looking too bad. We could actually live in here if we wanted to. We have a nice little farm going. Now we can actually get some light going. I think I'm gonna actually replace these lanterns with some sea pickles. Some spots do not have the water source blocks, so we just gotta water bucket it up. Get some kelp going around here, create some more water source blocks. Also, the kelp is just going to look nice in here. Can't forget the lily pads on the tippy top of the water here. These guys are strolling together as a flock already. And last but not least, we need to go around and start placing a lot of this coral. We already had a bunch of color with the wool, with the lime green and the magenta, but now with the coral, we have so much. Next, not only did I want to just bone meal it up, because bone mealing does make it look nice. I like having the full grassy effect underwater, but now we're going to use some glow lichen. So let's add some over here. Instead of just having the sea pickles for light, we're going to use a bunch of this. Need to make more water sources here, so let's, uh, let's try bone mealing that up. I love how quickly it spreads, and it also gives the walls a little bit more texture. Grabbed a couple more fish here, and we actually got some amethyst clusters because I wanted to go around and add some of these where these small grasses were. We'll open spots left where we don't have any grass also. I usually try to cover everything up. Don't mind the dirt right now. This is where I've been getting all of my buckets of water. These guys are all hanging out right on the roof of my AFK spot. I am loving this little room right here. I cannot wait to hang out and collect some more iron. It's about time we expanded it. Let's go get some more fish. I also love this area that we have right on top. It's just our own little custom lush cave. Not looking too bad. I think we're just going to have to take down this little dirt square right here. It's kind of in the way. Be gone, sir. Let's head all the way back up here. Ooh, it no longer takes me one rocket. Ooh, and you know what? There is a skeleton up top, which reminds me. We need to get a bunch of carpet up here so that stuff stops spawning up here. Sir, you gotta go. Yeeted. Yeet. Let's go down here and take a nap real quick. Glad we realized this sooner than later, otherwise that could have turned out to be a huge problem. And stuff is definitely spawning down here. Skeletons were burning up. Get the magenta carpeted up also. Let's get some acacia saplings up here in the basket actually before we go. I'd like to just see a little bit more color right there. Not looking too bad, dude. This is crazy. Actually, one last thing. We need to place a cap at the very top. If we're going to AFK here, we don't want any phantoms being accidentally able to slip down. That right there is a hot air balloon. I cannot believe we have one in this world. This is nuts. Let's see what it looks like as a civilian. If we're going to the concrete farm right here and we just happen to look straight up. Okay, that is a giant object in the sky. Now we have a bunch of planes and if you look behind us, we have a giant balloon. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. This one was a crazy build, and I will put the link down for the tutorial that I used down below. Thanks again to all the Patreon members, all of the YouTube members, and all of the Twitch subscribers. I really do appreciate y'all. Last thing I want to do is remind you guys to take care of yourselves, do something nice for somebody, and have a great rest of your night. I do appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to episode 49 of the Hardcore Let's Play series. We are going to be working on a leather worker trading hall today, getting this guy home. But first, as usual, we have a couple things to do. Look at that thing up in the sky. Look at these all in the sky. I am so happy with this world now. As usual, we have a couple things we need to do before we get done. Let's head up right to the hot air balloon. The world download is about to be available, so we got a couple things that we got to clean up and a couple things we got to add to the world. Here's what we worked on the last episode, and thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate y'all. This thing was so fun to make. We put an aquarium on the inside of a hot air balloon, and we're about to actually add a couple more fish. Let's get you in here. We'll get you, you, and you. It's kind of funny. I realized all the cod roll together and all of the tropical fish hang out in their own little groups. We have our updated AFK platform right here that used to sit high above the sky. Now it looks like it's well underwater, but believe it or not, we are way up in the sky. Been AFKing here for a couple of days, but I think what we're going to do is get a YouTube stream going and get an iron farm at spawn. That way we don't have to AFK anymore. The thing's just going to keep going all the time. Let's pop out here. There's actually something, or someone rather, that I wanted to show you guys. All of the villagers that we had moved around a couple episodes ago, well, one of them made their way all the way up into the watchtower over here. Dude, <laughs> what are you doing and how'd you get up here? Honestly, these views are kind of unbeatable over here. This guy might have the best spot on this land. This guy doesn't have a name, so we're gonna name you Buster Brown, and he also doesn't have any cake, so you know what? We're gonna give him some cake. I'm willing to bet he also would like a bed. Let's get that right here. Let's just get some oak signs going right here so he has a little bit of ledge. And while we're naming stuff, I actually wanted to head down to the polar bear sanctuary. Let's fly right over this little island campsite and name some of these guys. Yo, actually, wait, hold on. Somebody moved into the island. First guy ran away, but this guy looks like he's making himself right at home. Good on you, buddy. Good on you. All right, so let's actually name these guys. We got Pappy right here looking like Pappy. And I think this guy right here staring me in the face, I think that's Pancake. Now we have Pam, Pat, Pappy, and Pancake. Oh, I also forgot to mention, if anyone is wondering, I do have a smaller totem right now, and that's because of a resource pack called Smaller Totem. I'll actually put the link for that resource pack down in the description for my videos now since I'm using it. Let's fly right over here. Oh, yeah, so the horse that was spinning, that horse disappeared. I don't know, maybe he spun and, like, flew away. I'm really not sure what happened, but we did gain a stew. Stew's over here just chilling. He's been on this dripstone for a couple of days now, and he came from all the way over on the other side of the island, like, all the way over here, right where this cat sanctuary is and this little pond that we had actually made on a brand new stream. By the way, feel free to stop by anytime. It is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. But he used to be the scaffolding camel that was right there, and he somehow traveled all the way back to the starter house. Which I do gotta say really does mean that Stu is a real one. You guys have given a bunch of good names in the comment sections down below, and please keep giving your ideas for names. I would love to hear more. But for now, we do have a couple cats that we're gonna name right now, and we're gonna bring them back to the cat sanctuary. We got Gertie right here. We have Carpet right here. We have Shelly, and we also have Dirt. I have a feeling we're going to have a problem with Dirt. He's kind of a troublemaker. Come on, guys. You got this. Almost here, cats. Are you with me? It looks like we still... Okay, we have three. Let's walk through here. Single file now, cats. One teleported. Carpet. Gertie can sit. Looks like Shelly's up here bouncing around. Sit down. This means we lost Dirt. I'm telling you, I knew this was going to happen. Dirt's just going to show up one of these days, and we'll have to take him back here on his own. Okay, never mind. Dirt is actually literally right outside. Let's get right back in. Come on now, Dirt. You can just sit down right here, buddy. Thank you very much. You know what? I think you guys deserve a cake. There's one more mob that I wanted to name real quick, and so we're going to head over to the Donkey Sanctuary. Love that we can fly under this hot air balloon on our way there now. Let's pull up right into the front yard. Let's see, can we hop in? We can. I think it's time we give them a cake. And we got Dennis right here. We got Dexter. No name, you got Doris. Thanks again, guys, for throwing all the names down in the comment section down below. I really do appreciate it. I would love to hear more of them, so keep throwing them down there. Now, since the world tour and world download is going to be next episode, we should be at the cartography trading hall right now, but I feel like we should get that done at the end of the episode after we get this trading hall built. That way we don't have to run through the map update twice. So what I was thinking we do in the meantime is update these goal boards. I know that we have one here and one all the way on the other side. Maybe we should just combine those. 
But if we fly down over here, we can take the Pop Museum, Custom Cherry Blossom Grove, Armory with new trims, and Flower Petal Farm over to the other one. There we go, not bad. We got all this updated here, but uh, now I've been thinking, maybe let's go to the nether. Let's put a goal board in there. So what I did was on the way to the frog light farm was put the hanging signs above my head showing all of the goals that I have for the nether. First is going to be the nether hub. Then we're going to do the netherite beacon. We have a ghast sanctuary coming up. Zombified pigman sanctuary coming up too. The wither skelly farm is necessary. Same as the piglin trading hall. I've never made one of these, so I really want to get that done. And then, of course, a nether starter house. I've never made one of those either, so I think we should just get one of those done. All in due time, though. That's the point of this goal board. We're going to get these goals done. I think we're going to start off just making the nether hub first, though. So this whole thing right here is about to get expanded. I'm actually going to head down over here because I need to get outside the glass tunnel because I had left a beacon when we had made that gold farm all the way out here. Here's the Bastion with all of the- oh my gosh, so much Blackstone. We still have to take this back. And there's the beacon. We gotta get this thing home. You're coming with me, friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Got the beacon and I got the iron. Let's actually go back home real quick. I got something to deal with regarding some iron. I gotta be careful landing here, too. I always forget that this is just so much lava. Having troubles getting through the door there, buddy? I'm, I I opened it for you. The bed's right... Are you are you okay, buddy? Here you go. There, there you go. See ya. Okay, so about that iron, we do have another golem infestation. So uh, we're gonna have to start taking these guys out. Sorry, dude. I will... Uh, I'll see you later. For, this is just like an iron farm itself right here. They just keep getting trapped in this little spot. I wonder how much we can count also. This is one. We got two in the house again. Number three over here is stuck on my lecterns. Before he got stuck, he must have pushed Santa off his cake. Santa, get back on the cake. Thank you very much. Stop spawning golems, buddy. It's becoming a little bit too much. Take these guys out, too. There's four and five in here. Sorry, number four. And sorry, number five. We got number six coming after me right here. Okay, you're going down, buddy. Number seven's trying to hide behind this tree right here. I think I see you, buddy. Number seven is down. And those were just the guys that were wandering around the starter house. We have number eight right here, but I'm never taking this guy out. He's doing great. You, sir, not so much, though. You need to step it up. We might need to start taking some villagers to become leather workers. And this guy right here seems like a very nice candidate. I'm going with you, buddy. Actually, you're coming with me. This guy's going to live a very long leather working life. And he is extremely happy about it. You can just see it right in his face. Oh, my God. I see two iron golems right there. What is what's happening? There's officially a takeover. Ooh, and I did want to show you guys, recently on a YouTube stream, we had made two of these cozy little boats right here. You're gonna have to wait, Buster. Wait just one second. I'm gonna hop in here. We have two little houseboats here that villagers have actually made their way to and then jumped off. I'm not sure if they're here anymore, but I'm gonna keep building boats here that are just gonna be parked in between all of these docks. These are pretty much the same as the mangrove boat in front of the starter house. Actually, I'll show you guys that right now. We built this guy over here in a long play a couple months back, but now we have a spruce version and a jungle version. And I'm gonna keep building a lot more of these around the city. Dude, I can just hear Stu. What's going on, man? Do you need help getting off this dripstone? Actually, wait, nope. You're gonna stay right there. I kind of like you right there. Dripstone Stu is what they call you. All right, now let's get you to the official spot of the trading hall. We're gonna go past the new starter house over here, across this empty land that will soon be filled. Now this one right here, this actually covers a giant hole that we had dug out on stream, and I experimented with the colors on the roof a little bit. We got spruce, birch, and cherry. We got bricks, we got spruce and obsidian down here. Random assortment of furnaces and amethyst and torch flowers. Got a wandering trader that seems to like this area back here. Recently, I started in between all of the builds because I had been neglecting some of the spots. I started putting little campfires in between. Small campsites and small ponds really bring out all the big builds. Gotta remember to think about all the little things when you're building a huge world like this. Let's see what's going on with your wallet, buddy. You got the pink tulips, acacia, purple dye, the blue eye. You know what? I'm just going to take this stuff from you because I want to. Don't necessarily need this stuff, but I'm going to take it from you anyways. I do want your leads, though, buddy. Thank you very much. Ow, do not spit on me, sir. They attacked me first. You saw it. It's nice that the flower farm is starting to get enclosed by more buildings. The giant leather worker trading hall is about to pop up right here. But I do want to show you guys the interior real fast. This is the spiral mine shaft that we had made. And again, on the interior, we were kind of experimenting with a bunch of different materials to see what we could get. But this thing goes all the way down to bedrock, and it's kind of like a roller coaster. Let's actually just uh, see how this thing goes. All the way down to the bottom we go. This thing is crazy. It's kind of hard to get the camera angle going. I kind of have to always twist. It's fun thinking of different ways to get all the way down to bedrock. 
But we can pick this thing up right here, throw it on the item frame, and we have a zombie head down here now. I love that we have these in the world now. I had completely forgotten about charged creepers. But this right here is the small room that we have at Bedrock, and actually I would like to get one of these hallways going all the way to the giant room that we have dug out for the Deep Slate. We do have four different pathways here that I'm going to use for a Deep Slate mine, but one of them is going to lead to the giant room that we had been making. I think we have a couple hundred blocks to dig, it shouldn't be too much. Well, of course we're running into a big pocket of lava, let's break this down. Get all this out of here. Oh my gosh, I found there's an unusual amount of lava all the way down at Bedrock. Oh, okay, we made it to the other side, got some slimes down there, nice. Sorry slime, but you're gonna have to be gone, thank you very much. We ended up getting quite a bit of materials when we were digging out this tunnel here. Got a shulker box full of goodies and a decent amount of diamonds. Let's take the redstone all the way back upstairs. This might be my new favorite way of getting back up to sea level though. Put that back and we'll head over here. We actually have 13 villagers that are ready to go. These guys are ready for the leather worker lifestyle. Before we started building here, I wanted to set up a color palette, so I set up a cauldron here, and uh, we started working with a little bit of the concrete. Now, we have not worked with a lot of concrete yet, but first you just need some sand. You need four placements for the gravel, and you need four placements for the sand, and you can get all your concrete powder. Now, at first it has a really nice gravel-like texture still, but when you place it in the water, it becomes much more solid. That's why I was thinking we have the gray and the light gray concrete with the gray concrete powder that we could use mostly for this build. Looks like I might be using a little bit of the black concrete powder for the line right here, and a little bit of the cyan terracotta. For some reason, cyan terracotta ends up looking a little gray, and I think that's going to work out very well. Now since we're not using our totem, we have to make sure that the door is closed behind us. We're going to load up a bunch of concrete powder into the dropper here. Make sure you have some concrete powder in your offhand, and then away you can go. This thing works absolute wonders. It's a little loud, but man, is it quick. Before you know it, you're loaded up with concrete, and uh, we can get to building. What I'm going to do is get the basic square shape of the cauldron going, and then the four corners here, so we have to lift up four sides in the middle. Just gonna replicate this thing and make it about 20 times as big as the one block. We're gonna have to bring out some of the land right here because I kind of wanna just start right about here. Let's go over maybe 21 blocks. Let's go up by 21 blocks here to make a cube. Well, this better be a cube or else I'm gonna have to take all this down and that's gonna be a little bit of work. Well, all right, that definitely looks like a cube. It's not too big, not too small. It's definitely a little bit bigger than the cat sanctuary, much bigger than this spiral mine shaft. So I'm probably going to start off using a bunch of this gray concrete, but we're going to have to switch off with a little bit of the cyan terracotta for a little bit of texturing. The cyan terracotta, for some reason, is the only block that gets a little bit close other than the gray concrete powder. Put a little bit of this in. That's not too bad. But still, it is going to be mostly the gray concrete. And with a lot of the gray concrete powder with a lot of the gray concrete mixed in, we have ourselves a cauldron. Let's fly out here real quick make our way back around and show you guys what we got real quick big cauldron this thing is huge i think the next step that we need to take is filling this whole thing with water because after all it is a cauldron i think it resembles the cauldron a little bit we'll get that black stripe going down the middle and we'll get some details on the outside but when we get the water bucket in the middle the cauldron it looks like there is one block down for the water so let's go up top place a bunch of dirt this is just gonna allow me to get a bunch of source blocks at these upper levels Get you here, let's get you there, get you right over here, sir, thank you very much. Okay, you got that done, I believe we can just take away this layer of dirt. Be gone, sir, thank you very much. Well, I should have known this was going to happen. All of the concrete powder that I had in here is now just regular concrete, so look at all, all of this stuff right here. Oh, and I fell to the bottom. All of this concrete powder right here. Yeah, as soon as we take the dirt away, it uh, it turns right into concrete. I, I should have thought about that, but it doesn't matter. This is about to be an aquarium, probably, so uh, it doesn't really matter what the walls are made out of. It only matters what life we bring inside of here. But first, we should probably focus on getting these guys into this building. I actually made a checkerboard floor down here for them to enjoy. Kind of like a big dance floor, but we're going to turn this into a big trading hall. Most of the structure we did on stream, and thanks for joining on that stream if you guys did, I do appreciate that, but we did forget a couple of things like these spruce fence gates right here. Something that's about to make this trading hall a little bit more unique is the particles coming from the water dripping from the ceiling. I actually like that a lot, I didn't think about that effect. These villagers might not be smart enough to know where they're about to be working for the rest of their life, so let's get a structured path going. I was moving these guys into this dirt circle here so they don't leave, and I noticed that one of the boats is uh, completely empty, which means something bad happened to this villager. 
We'll not speak of that though, we have plenty more villagers. I'm gonna close this up so you guys can't leave and pretend like nothing happened. I'm just gonna spam some cauldrons in here a little bit so that they can take some jobs once they get in here, and uh, then we'll move them into more structured locations. Alright guys, you may be free, let's start off one and two. This guy on the other hand loves the leather work in life. Never mind, he had second thoughts, he's like, give me the work. The floodgates have opened, let's get you out, let's get you out over here, let's get you out and you out. Leather workers rise, everybody go! We must work the leather or we are nothing! Move, boys, move! Looks like everyone's making themselves at home in here, except we do have some freeloaders still down here. Ah, buddy, I see you made the right choice, but you two over here, while you're freeloading. While they're still making the decision of whether or not they want to work, let's see what we need to trade with all these guys. Fly through the flower garden, let's lock in a couple of these trades over here. Usually, I think they start off mostly just trading leather. We'll lock you in, buddy, thanks for the emerald. We'll get a lot of these guys locked into their trades. We can get these guys zombified so we can get down to, I think, a one-for-one -one trade on the leather. And we can get an armory with all these new leather pants and tunics. Thank you for the trade, buddy, I really appreciate you. I think it's only right that we get a glowstone tower in the middle of this room, and then I think we need to start working a lot of these guys into some stations. We can take the water right here and kind of work them into the glowstone corners in the middle. We can also work them into the corners on the sides over here. We just need to figure out how we want this decorated, mostly. Hey guys, uh, how about we get to work, man? The team is only as strong as its weakest players. Got this last guy into his spot here. Now he for sure cannot leave. We have two cauldrons in each corner, and we have four of them in the middle. Just going to take this away. They shouldn't be able to leave. I'm going to let this all be open, because the zombie's going to come through and get these guys to the one-for-one -one trades on this leather. Decided to get a little bit of the acacia wood going in here for some more color, and if we go through the back, we actually have some roads that I started hooking up. This front side, I think we're just going to let have some beach access, but if we go to any of the other three sides, there's a little bit of a path that leads here. This guy is roaming around free while these guys, well, they're here forever. We'll get all the cauldrons back into place and we'll get this interior decoration going as soon as we get them all zombified and cured, but uh, in order to get that done, it needs to be nighttime because uh, the zombie's going to burn. Last episode, we accidentally burned one. We will not let that happen again. But while it's daytime, let's head up the scaffolding and see if we can get some decoration on the outside. I did a little bit of testing, and I think the cobbled deep slate walls and these deep slate brick walls, these are going to be the ones that kind of are the closest in color to the gray concrete powder and the gray concrete. Also, it looks like a lot of this kelp is almost fully grown. We're going to keep letting this grow. Once these are all water source blocks, we're going to get some fish and some coral up in here. We're going to do wall, defense, to chain, to lantern action on the corners. And at the very top, we're going to add some azalea bushes. Dead bushes with the leaves right on top always works. And we'll get this design going all the way down with one block skipped on each row. We're about to use a lot of walls, a lot of fences, a lot of chains, and a lot of lanterns. Not bad at all. We can actually probably get some fence gates down here. Let's get some of the oak fence gates and alternate them with the brick walls. We'll go bing, bang, boom, and bop. Actually, on the bottom here, I thought maybe in the corner we add the campfire for some light. Let's get the trapdoors around that. Not too bad. I'm liking this. Let's get this on every corner. Both sides not looking too bad here. Let's, uh, let's go over here and put some torch flowers down. And it looks like the sun is on its way down, so let's actually head and grab that zombie. I'm gonna fly on over to the underground library. Hi, everybody. How's it going over here? We're gonna make our way behind everything, and uh, there should be a zombie still back here. Anybody home? What's going on? We have zombie right here. Ow, dude. All right, buddy. Just follow me this way. It is nighttime. No iron golems around. Let's shut this. All right, follow me, dude. I preemptively got all of these snow golems out of the way, so there's no defense system. Just a little bit further past the spiral mine shaft. Let's open this fence gate and follow me in here, buddy. Jump past you over here, lock you in, and you're good to go. I'm just going to chill outside here. I'm going to hide behind this, and uh, he's going to forget that I'm even here. Ouch, I'm listening to people getting smacked. That's no- Ooh, we got two zombies already. Buddy, you're doing a great job. I'm just gonna hang out in this scaffolding for a little bit while he's doing his thing in there. Coming back, we have our Potion of Weakness, and we have our Golden Apples. This guy is completely blocked off by some Azalea Bushes. Let's throw one down right here. Let's cure you. Let's cure you. Get one down in this corner. Let's uh, go here. Let's get one down in this corner. Bing, bang. Let's go over here. Get a boom and get a bop. I like this middle right here because we just got four of them with one splash potion. Ow, dude! This guy right here stole a leaf. You better put that down, buster. These guys right here look like a dance crew right now. Let's go. 
Looks like everyone's being cured right now. I think we just need to sit here and wait. And while we're waiting on these guys to get cured, let's go to the tippy top. I think it's about time we take the kelp out of here. We have risen. Let's go down to the bottom. I think we're going to have to put a bunch of sea pickles down here. Let's get the coral here. Oh, God, that's loud. We're going to have a bunch of kelp. Oh, my God, my ears. I don't know why, but this kelp is looking mighty tasty right now. It's a little too dark down here. Let's get some sea pickles on the floor. And since this is a custom aquarium, let's get some of this coral up against the wall. Growing itself out of the floor here. Ooh, I actually hear them getting cured. Let's go down here real quick. Can I hop down? I'm very curious as to what the trades are going to be. Let's see what value we got. And oh my god, it's one for one immediately. Let's go, dude. Start trading with all these guys. I want to see what they have at master level. One emerald for a nice pair of leather boots. I'll take four. Took a lot of leather boots, leather caps, and leather tunics to get traded here. But we ended up getting some of these guys as masters. And I don't really care so much for the flint trades. Honestly, the one zombification I think is good now. Let's get this guy out of here. See you later, buddy. There's so many tunics, man. We have so many tunics. I think we can take these trapdoors out. Let's put the logs in the middle. Strip those. I think we can strip the logs in the corners now, too. I want to fly over to the lava farm real quick. I haven't been over here in a while, but now we actually have a use for it. I haven't really been using lava as a fuel source since we had the blaze rods, but, uh, you know, it's nice to come back here. There's a couple places I wanted to slap the lava in here because lava can actually fit into the cauldrons and so can some water. Unfortunately, we can't dye the water. I think that's only a bedrock addition feature and unfortunately we can't do that here. The lava here is making everything look nice and bright in the middle. We got the surrounded cauldrons filled up with water. These guys are all backed up into their corners. They are not going anywhere and they are ready to trade. We got the master levels here. I think the last thing I wanted to do to the interior was get on the floor some ferns in each of the corners. Don't want to get too much because now that we have the lava, anything too close, especially wood or plants, will burn. Last thing I wanted to do to the interior was get on the floor some ferns in each of the corners. Don't want to get too much because now that we have the lava, anything too close, especially wood or plants, will burn. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of tropical fish. Let's put them all in the hot bar and let's fly in. We have a brand new custom coral reef on the inside here. A lot of the glow lichen has been growing on the inside here. And we actually don't have to use much lighting on the outside because the glow lichen has made its way on the way up. And it has a light level of seven. So that's pretty nice. This thing is going to be well lit up top. Let's get these fish on the inside here, though. These guys are going to make themselves at home. Got three more. Here we go. Beautiful. Make yourselves right at home, fish. We're going to have to make a building for that concrete maker over there. It can't just be sitting out in the open like that. Let's go down, take a quick nap, and then take a flight out. I want to see what this thing is looking like. Hop down over here to the concrete maker. Nice, dude. We got the campfires on the side. We got the cherry leaves at the top with the cobbled deep slate and the deep slate bricks with the azalea leaves. Not too bad. I feel like a nice addition to the aquarium would be some ducks. Let's throw, let's throw some chicken eggs up in here. I think this might be inescapable, so sorry about this little chickens. But uh, we're gonna, this is going to be an aquarium and a duck pond. Okay, so now that we have the trading hall built, we can actually fly over to the cartography trading hall and get this map updated. We have about four months worth of buildings to update here, so this is going to be quite a bit. Okay, we already have run into a problem. We have a guy on the roof. Right? What are you doing up here, dude? How did you even get up here? Is this even... Is, how is this even a possibility? Well, I guess he actually could have gone up these stairs all the way over through here and through this room onto this porch, but then he somehow got over the gate. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's, uh, let's drop you down here, buddy. See you later. You have been saved, and over here I have noticed what is going on. Why does everybody decide to keep getting caught in the azaleas? You could be here forever, but luckily I'm nice and I'm in the saving mood. Get a job, buddy. Reintegrate yourself. Thank you very much. We have a lot going on here. Yeah, okay, so we... Oh my god, the harbor's not even on here. We have everything. The bamboo farm's up here. We just built the giant cauldron right here. The town has moved all the way out here. This lava lake is gone. All these trees are gone. We have multiple builds in the water. We gotta get this thing updated. Let's start taking these off one by one, and uh, let's see what this looks like. Let's move out here. Oh, look at all that getting updated. Beautiful. Going towards the harbor, getting updated. Nice. City is changing slowly over here, too. That is so cool to see. Cauldron on this map is looking like a giant square. Got to make sure the hot air balloon is on the map. And I think if we turn around, we got to get this iceberg out here on the map, too. 
And we'll go around the corner, get the complete iceberg over here. Buddy, you have escaped, and I wonder what your fate will be. Are you just going to hang out here, or are you going to decide where your home's going to be? So we actually just got word of the mob vote picks, and it's going to be between the crab, the armadillo, and the penguin. So down below in the comment section, let me know what you guys think you would like to win. I honestly think all three of them would be super cool in the game, but uh, I think, I don't know, man, I think I might be Team Crab. Gotta get over here updated because we finally have a nice little Halloween build in this world. We have a giant pumpkin patch, and this was made over a new long play that we made right before this came out. Thank you guys for watching this, by the way. I really do appreciate it. It took a lot of pumpkins. I mean, it was about a stack of pumpkins per giant pumpkin, but it was worth it. This ended up looking really nice. Got a lot of podzol and coarse dirt everywhere with the pitcher plants. I think that brings out the orange and all the pumpkins out. Can't forget the villager transport system out here. Also, now would be a good time to show you since it's up on the map. We have a brand new mycelium farm. I didn't want to keep going back to the mushroom island to keep getting mycelium. So on a quick YouTube stream, and feel free to stop by the YouTube streams anytime. But on a quick stream, we actually put a bunch of dirt up in here. We got some mycelium in the middle that can never be taken out. And some mycelium on all of the corners that are covered up by some clay pots. But basically, the mycelium is going to spread here, and uh, we'll be able to just come back anytime and get it farmed out. It's nice to have some paths leading away from this main path going to island number two. We have the new version of Rainbow Mountain starting to make its way onto the map over here, and I think the last block is going to poke right there. This updated map is crazy. It's going to be nice to have some stuff on the northern part of the island to finish that off, and then we can start building in the desert. I think I want to do a custom desert village. Also, this desert ravine right here has a lot of potential, as well as this little plains biome that we got to build in. <laughs> you can see all the charged creeper blasts on that beach. Let's go hang out by that cauldron just a little bit more. Giant cauldron not looking too bad. Let's go check on the ducks real quick. How you doing, buddies? Try not to eat all the fish, okay? Down here checking on the boys in the trading hall. What is going on, fellas? Thank you for being here. Thanks for trading with me for the rest of your life. And thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for all the support. All of the new YouTube members, welcome in. All of the Patreon supporters, thank you very much. And all the Twitch subscribers, thank you guys. I appreciate all the support. Remember guys, take care of yourselves and do something nice for somebody. Here's to another thousand days. Thanks. Bye.